Hello and welcome to Dysylvania. We're from Romania. We play D&D and uh, we have very beautiful local vampire English. This is the fifth episode of Vim, the tale of immortality. And for those who need a refresh, you can check the book of recollection, recollections right here um, with magical podcast recaps that are super awesome and very short and then immediately return because you'll be missing out on something amazing. This is a folklore inspired adventure uh, in a magical yet brutal world world uh, with uh, players that face tough decisions, no afterlife and no resurrection spell. Uh, and uh, I am your terribly excited DM and speaking of players who might die, let's introduce today's hero starting with Karina Georgescu. Hopefully I won't die. Uh, Rares Ghechoyu. Hopefully Karina doesn't die. Eu nu țin gure an. I will kill as many as possible, even your cats. Ho ho! And uh, Ruxandra Vorodnek. I guess I'll die. <laughs> and David! I promise not to kill anyone. Um, and without any further ado, let's go and jump very, very fast into the world of Vim, where we left up in an epic fight against something enlarging. time we left off with you guys this beautiful gang entering this new district from uh, Jovis district the purple into the cloud a district run by mercury uh, you felt this welcoming mother-like presence embracing you you saw steam just puffing in everybody seemed very relaxed and you stepped into the biggest uh, grandest commerce center, the the cloud, uh, where the infrastructure and everything was neatly tied, almost OCD level, and looked very car colorful and peaceful. Uh, most of the residents uh, have this sort of this laissez-faire attitude about them and have their head uh, and hair covered with beautiful cloths and headpieces. Um, and you stopped to look for a guy or a establishment or something named Bob this is where where your only clue and you searched and searched and at, at some point uh, while you keep investigating this wonderful uh, marketplace you saw a guy a blonde guy with a bit of a disproportionate head the bigger than his body with a goatee just staring at your new friend here Pax intently um, and as soon as Pax notices back uh, he sees Albus, his ex-boyfriend, just yelling at him, Oh, so now you can look at me, you big cock! And then he gets very nervous and sparks just escape the air and causing four beautiful roosters. You know, wild roosters, just enlarging and growing and growing until they break the cages and now they are double your sizes and we're gonna put them in this beautiful battle map that we have right here and right now uh this is uh beautifully uh uh the designed uh with and helped with miniatures and uh, wonderful props and terrain pieces by rolling hills craft we have a promo code i'm gonna talk about it a bit later but until then please roll me initiative because one of the cocks step uh, one of the roosters just it's, it's a it's a word one of the roosters just steps in and just cackles at you guys uh roll me initiative oh my god <laughs> oh no. Fresh hell. Until they, they roll initiative, uh, 
uh, beautiful uh, terrain pieces and miniatures are sponsored by Rolling Hills Craft. We have a promo code Dysylvania10 available for eight months. You can see it appearing probably somewhere. Um, you can check it at rollinghillscraft.com and enjoy because they have marvelous things. Um, so, starting with uh, Shaq. Uh, 17. 17. Uh, Pax. Four. Four. A mighty four. Kate. Uh, 11. 11. Gregory. 15. 15. Uh, Grace. I have not thrown for her. 15 also. Uh, what's your dex? What's your cox? Uh, my dex is minus <laughs> 2. <laughs> okay, so Grace, 15.1. And Jen. 8. Eight. The infinite sign on the uh, it's, it's fitting. So we have Shaq, Grace, uh, Gregory, Kate, someone, uh, Jen, uh, Pax, Albus, the Roosters, someone, someone, and um, something. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. So Rooster 1, Rooster 2, Rooster 3. Okay. Um, so as the um, this happens and the the beautiful roosters, each in its own color, just spring uh, down the marketplace and start prancing and jumping around. They look menacing towards you. Shaq, what do you do? Um, I look towards the one that's right in front of me. Uh, it's the one here. Uh, does it look scared or menacing or agitated in any way? Uh, this guy. Yes, this guy. Right okay. Uh, yeah, he looks agitated and he looks that he will sort of like bite your head off. He looks nervous, he was entrapped for a long time. What do you do? I will want to approach him with my hands up and uh, start uh, speaking to him in a calm voice. Shh, shh, shh. Settle down, settle down. And like try to be as, as uh, at least menacing as I can. Here. And even, yeah, even try to pet him slightly. Oh, okay, so close. Yeah, I'm getting close to Touching, you. touching the cock. <laughs> yes, gently. <laughs> Gently, very gently. Oh, there's gonna be so many of these, aren't there? Isn't okay, it? nice bedside uh, manners. So, uh, Did he you're stop growing. Yeah, you're trying to uh, give me an animal. <laughs> give me an animal handling. <laughs> Indeed. That's what you said. Mm, it's a four. Four. Uh, okay. You're kissing more than. <laughs> and I have big fangs, and I'm approaching it. Do not fear me. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's what yeah. they said oh. in the Jungle Book. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. A calm moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. The... Uh, next, we have Grace. Grace is just gonna uh, turn Grace and look confused. Uh, Gregory, what do you do? Um, so I will uh, take uh, my hammer and uh, get ready. Okay. Um, uh, we have, uh, after this, we have Kate on deck. Yes. So, uh, who is uh, this character? Yeah. Uh, that is Shaq. Shaq Shaq. 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 Okay. So. <laughs> I him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's Grace, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I will move right next to Grace and uh, uh, be ready right next to her. Okay, here, right here. Uh, just in case uh, she gets attacked so that I can uh, protect. So you're ready in action to protect? Uh, no, no. That's uh, That will be my reaction when it happens. So. Um, that's uh, all my turn. Actually, as a bonus action. So you want to ready an action, basically? No, no. I have a reaction that will allow me that. Okay. When it okay. okay. So as a bonus action, I will. Uh, we will. <laughs> Suspense. <laughs> I will uh, whisper to uh, Shifty and see. Psst, Shifty, can you? Stick one of its foot, uh, one of its feet uh, to the ground, and I'll try to actually get a, a shove bonus action with uh, Shifty. Okay, so Shifty, this blob, this uh, oh, purple blob, blob, not Bob, blob, <laughs> uh, that you packs haven't seen, starts like manifesting from Gregory's back. You thought it was maybe a spot, something dirty, but it starts. <laughs> just flying in the air it has a mouth and nose and everything and it sort of like mimics like a fish and then just uh, tumbles and sticks tries to stick one of the 
feet of the roosters in front of uh, rooster in front of uh, Gregory. Yep. Yeah. So uh, uh, let's see. It is uh, DC. Thirteen. This is thirteen uh, strength save. Okay. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go. Strength save DC thirteen uh, fails. Okay. Uh, it's shout. Uh, it's a uh, uh, prone. Ah, uh, so ah, uh, you're trying to shove. Shove is uh, specifically prone or to move it. Uh, shove. Uh, I think it's you being can choose either. For let's say for now it's prone. Like uh, shifty, like tries to to trip the the rooster. It sticks one of his feet. The rooster try try to like um, fight a little bit. But, uh, topples down and falls on its side. Uh, Kate. Uh, so I am going to. If I use my movement, I don't trigger any opportunity attacks, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm in between the <laughs> in between two roosters. Oh uh, yeah. Definitely, you're not in uh, any danger. Give me the... Where is the... Okay, cool. Uh, I would like to move... This is not... No. Ah, I, this is me, right? This it's is here. getting intense. I would like to move, like, around here somewhere. And just get the fuck out of there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's, uh, that's perfect. And I will ready my short bow. And you will ready your short bow and prepare a, uh, a ready action yeah. in case of... In case they, they start attacking, because I, I mean, I've seen chicken in my life, but never this big, <laughs> and I don't know what their intentions are. Mm -hmm. The sizes are reversed. So, <laughs> if, so if someone attacks, you're gonna uh, if, short bow? If, if one of the uh, big mm -hmm. roosters attack, mm -hmm. uh, I am going to target, let's see, w uh, whichever one attacks, I'm gonna okay. uh, target it. Okay, next, uh, we have um, the, the, pro the proprietor, the, the owner of these <laughs> roosters, that comes in front of Gregory, seeing that you tripped one of his beloved animals, and says, as an action, Sir, don't kill them! They're the only property I've got, sir! I need them to feed my family and children, I don't have much, sir! Oh, this is what he does. Next, uh, Jen. Proceeds to kill them. <laughs> mm. uh, Genevieve is drooling at uh, the corner of her mouth. Uh, you hear a few smacks as she um, goes forward to this. May I get the. Yeah. To this rooster that is. The other one. Uh, that is here on this cart. Uh, I will walk towards it, and because I'm a dread ambusher, I get additional 10 feet this round. So I have 45 feet of movement. You reach here with 45. And I will uh, ready a dagger if the rooster attacks me. Okay, so you're gonna ready a dagger. Um, and that would have also a uh, Dread Ambusher uh, bonus point, which would be a Okay, one. cool. Uh, Pax. Um, still in, in his street clothes, Pax pulls out the, the big golden feather he was writing with earlier um, uh, and holds it up. Uh, to his forehead and time this seems to like kind of if you look if you're not looking at him it's not but if you're looking at it, time seems to just sort of dilate as as uh, these purple golden sparkles start traveling across uh, his body uh, and as they course over him they leave behind this this black armor with uh, golden filigree uh, this long uh, green cape uh, and the feather itself uh, first becomes shapes into a golden pommel and then a flourishing sword extends a uh, long shield materializes again as sparkles uh, flow over his uh, left arm and although it was just a second all of this seems to just 
flow as the sparkles spin and dance uh, temporarily, uh, not very explicably. Uh, and when it's all done, uh, he turns, uh, points to the to uh, the big-headed gentleman. Which is uh, Albus and it's right over here, for you uh, guys to know. You imbecile, you better fix this. Help fix this. Um, and he... Uh, as Genevieve walks up to that chicken, what does what is her intent looking like? Like, she's coming up to the chicken... And she's packing stealthily a dagger. <laughs> but she's gently coming in. With, yeah, with gently. It. Salivating. Yeah. yeah, you can see that. <laughs> with, with the fork in the Maybe. knife, just... <laughs> you can give an insight, yeah. and you can give a deception, or uh, if you want to hide it. Or stealth, what should I give? Deception, if you want to hide it. Six, I have no idea. Uh, I don't know, maybe she does. Eighteen. Okay. Cool, 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 whatever she's up to, who knows. Uh, so he will s come on to the other side of Gregory, the other side of the fallen One, two, chicken. Three. No, to the other side, to, like uh, One, across. Two, three. He's flanking, flanking okay. the drop chicken. Okay, cool, cool. There we go. Um, Beautiful miniatures, Rotten Hills Craft, yay. Cool. And a held action to hit it if it becomes aggressive. Okay. And that's it. Hold action, hit it. Uh, since this is your ex-boyfriend, uh, please roll me a d10. Relationship ah. check. <laughs> the X check. X check. The infamous it's X check. It's complicated. A 10 out of 10. A 10 wow. out of oh, 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 oh. He <laughs> proposes. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to let him down gently. I am very sorry. So, as you say, you imbecile, you fix this. Um, he starts sweating and sort of like tries to to come closer to um, uh, to come a bit closer to fix and you you know this about him he gets very sweaty very nervous he's like um, a, a bit flustered and <laughs> something like this uh, comes out of him his mouth and then from his hands like a wisp of something escapes and it's going towards Kate <laughs> and it hits Kate and then oh, her no. hair starts falling off. Whoa, oh, no. <laughs> what? You're bald now. Bald that case. bitch. <laughs> I like my hair. Uh, oh, it starts falling off and it's shiny, bald head. It's just appearing on... Uh, it's just there on Kate's, you know, um, uh, visage. Um, next, uh, we... And, and he's trying to, to go. This is like a, the bonus thing. An alopecia bolt. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then he's trying to come here and sort of like, what should I do? Uh, he gets some rope, should, should I tie it? No, make more people bald, you imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> he shakes. Uh, uh, give me an intimidation. Uh, twelve. Okay, um, with the twelve nothing happens. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, then we have the first uh, rooster, which is the one that Shaq tried to, to pet and he approached it. But unfortunately, Shaq's intentions do not reflect Shaq's visage. He looks like a fucking monster, a snake monster. And uh, he rolled also a four, so the, the <laughs> rooster will start uh, cackling <laughs> and start, you know, attacking. That I think uh, goes and. Um, um, after the attack, it sort of sets uh, a lot of uh, ready actions. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. You're gonna get packed, my friend, yeah. uh, by the big rooster. <laughs> um, well, so the first the thing, uh, I, you pet him. It, it's uh, it's 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 sort of like it comes with this enlarged beak and sort of tries to to hit you, but uh, misses unfortunately with thirteen then tries to uh, claw you with one of its, its its legs and misses also. But this attack, missed attack nonetheless, uh, uh, triggers a chain reaction starting with uh, Kate. This one that attacked Bolt. <laughs> with with Bolt Kate, Kate. Bolt, yeah. Bolt Kate in action. Uh, and I'm going to put some soothing ambience for Bolt Kate. I Ready? would have preferred a different vowel in that word. But, <laughs> um, Obviously, Kate is foggy. I mean, I have the bow ready and I just noticed that 
<laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and I'm I'm this close to shooting your Damn. ex, <laughs> but then I saw so which one? Oh, the one attacking the uh, shack. Okay. Uh, so first of all, steady aim. Uh, second of all, uh, elven accuracy because they are both wonderful. Ready. I don't think you can uh, read the steady aim. Can you? Can I? Uh, elven accuracy is a feat. Let's just go with it. Yeah, let's go with no? it, then we're gonna and, decide uh, afterwards. It's on Dex. Just roll. Just roll, roll, roll. Very high. Uh, Mommy he... wants some coke your sunk. Yeah, but it's the wrong... Uh, you're going towards a different one. Okay, you so know how a... many stews you can make with oh this? Oh my god, I know. Yeah. Okay, so it's... Uh, 20, 10 portions. 23. Okay. Hits. Assuming hits. It, it hits. 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 Okay. So the damage. Uh, uh, after the and I also have. Uh, we have Jen on deck and then Pax, just so you know. Sneak attack. So yours is with the no, with this one. I don't have a radiant. Uh, your reaction is with that one. Uh, yeah. My reaction is when someone Do near me six. gets attacked. Okay. So. Okay. okay. So it's a ten. It's a twelve Got it. damage. Good. How much? Oh. Some vampire English just spilled out of my <laughs> mouth. I'm sorry. Good. <laughs> Good. 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 <laughs> twelve. Uh, cool. Twelve. You hit it for a twelve Fine. damage. It. Okay. Twelve damage. Okay. So you. Uh, the bow um, escapes uh, your short bow and just lunges into the heart of the rooster that is just trying to attack Shaq. Shaq is frozen in motion, like, does not understanding why is this happening, and then strikes its heart and just dies. I want to no. catch it. Uh, you can use arms. your reaction. No. You, can catch it. You, can catch, you catch it in your arms. Uh, roll me, uh, you try to catch it. Roll me in athletics. Uh, it's a 25. You wow. catch it smoothly. Uh, it even like, uh, um, uh, you hear its last words as it says, <laughs> and you see its eyes just uh, closing. Uh, yeah, I, if I may, on the same reaction, I wish to put it out of its misery very quickly. Yes. Since I see it's You use your me. reaction. Yeah. How do you do it? Uh, I, I, it? I do like a shh, close its eyes and <laughs> cut its throat like exactly where, where it would kill it quickly. Um, one died, unfortunately. Your your favorite one. Uh, <laughs> the favorite cock died. Yes. No. <laughs> um, no. We. Yeah. We, What's going on? But we have three more. It's a world with three more mm. roosters. Three cocks. <laughs> um. Next, it's a uh, uh, gins uh, attack. Uh, 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 it was just on that one. On that one. On that one specific. So then it's Pax, is it? Same. I'm on that one. In front of me. Okay, but I think it it will uh, unfortunately also uh, try. Uh, this one is trying to attack Gregory with disadvantage because it's prone. Uh, okay. Natural twenty first one. Oh, and no. second one thirteen plus. It's a uh, sixteen. Do the reactions no. not trigger before? Oh. Ha ha. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. So first, I'll try and. Uh, advantage it being prone, right? Yeah, kill them all with our reactions before we <laughs> get into combat. Oh, but more things are happening. These. Oh no. <laughs> Your ex is going to be um, He is already. Yeah. 12. A Dickensian. Um, hits. What? Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Then let's have golden light uh, shine and envelop the blade as it cuts through. For uh, a total of uh, 18. Hits. Uh, oh no, it hits with a 12, and with an 18, as your sword lights up and you plunge it inside, it also dies uh, with sparks of gold just shimmering from your sword, and it's. Ah! So we have fried chicken. You're missing a, a, a bit of a, making a bit of a mess. <laughs> and he, he gestures to the, the salesman. We will uh, buy the hustles. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, second one. Uh, it doesn't uh, get to attack. The also the one next to Jen. He's trying to attack you. He's like making this big eyes predatory move. <laughs> trying to like uh, ruffle his feathers. Um. 
I unveil my teeth, I lick my uh, predatory fangs, and uh, I say incroyable and start jabbing at it. With my uh, give me, give me an attack. Um, an attack. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Seventeen. Hits. Damage. Okay, damage. It's an eight plus the dread ambusher plus a three. That would give me an eleven piercing damage. Um, it also dies. Like you're jabbing at it. <coughs> uh, the rooster goes ah, 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 and just you, Jen is like, no, 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 right no, 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 no. I, I just want to jab uh -huh. where I would know because mm -hmm. I oh. Mm -hmm. cook it mm -hmm. uh where's the big artery so you know uh the, the vein will pop uh blood will spray okay everywhere. you do exactly that tell me how do you finish it <laughs> so i i i pop the yeah. dagger and yeah. a, 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 an artery that i know uh, mm -hmm. it will explode uh, my my face is covered with blood i lick my lips <laughs> and uh, i would like to jump over it next turn and you know like tie it and uh this one is also down <laughs> spilling a lot of blood up it's a bloodshed over there and the last one this one <laughs> it's uh, coming on its side and it's attacking um it's trying to attack pax but uh, it's it misses with the first attack a bit a bit um he's, he's trying to beak at you he misses and the second one uh, also the, with the claw also misses um but then we have like this very sweet sweet peasant girl dressed in modest clothes and, and ponytails um braided very neatly and she she goes and says talks at you and says mr mr man sir please he's my friend please don't kill him i used to play with him he's very kind when it's not this big you already killed the others. And she starts to she starts crying. Um this is uh, Jenny's done. bathing in blood there. Bathing you are getting I got too well. excited. <laughs> She's making blood angels, you know. Um a man over here. No, I'm not gonna use someone else. A man over here transporting a mirror, um, like a, an old ancient mirror. Uh, this, it's it's uh, uh, stepping uh, a bit closer. It's trying to see what's what's happening. I see myself in the um, mirror. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're seeing yourself in, in the mirror. Uh, you're trying to see yourself in the mirror. In the mirror, it doesn't seem to work. It's also like she did. Mm -hmm. For some reason. Who's the fairest of them? Uh, <laughs> Who's that wonderful? But you girl? feel you, you're bold. <laughs> like you're fully bold. And we're gonna go okay. top of the round with Shaq, Grace, and Gregory. Okay, so basically I did realize that uh, it was the big headed guy that uh, caused all of this, right? Um, give me an arcana. Uh, it's an eight. Oh, yeah? Maybe? I mean, something. Maybe they're in cahoots with each other he sort of did something they grew okay well um shock will uh will uh, jump over the the dead rooster and go straight up to him and uh, grab him and and uh, hold him up in the air give me a grapple um, okay so first for a grapple i need to hit it first with okay an hit it it's a uh, 22 to hit H but what hit. does this look like hmm? what does this look like well, I want to do an intimidation, basically. No, I mean, in the scene, are you hurt? I'm not trying to hurt him, no, but just in order to grapple someone, you first have to hit it with an unarmed attack and then have a contest, athletics versus his acrobatics or athletics. So then give me an athletics or acrobatics for him, because let's see if I actually manage to grapple mm -hmm. him. So, to so you punch him. him? No, uh, I don't He him. failed, he starts shaking, uh, things escape out of his hands. Uh, he he fails. He's not even capable of, uh, of you know, um, and trying to resist. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm holding him him up and like looking to his eyes, menacingly, and then hissing. Do something, you incompetent! You're ruining everything. As you're doing, fix this. this. Roll me a d10. Oh no! Oh, I don't have a d10. I give you. Uh, emergency. Emergency d10. Call us. One. One, excellent. Um, it was bad on a ten, so let's see. He, <laughs> he starts speaking something to you. 
and then words do not come out and instead you see pink bubbles flowing and hitting you in the face and when they hit you they smell very nicely of sort of this bubble gum and cherry you, you have no idea what you're doing here do you um okay that's my turn cool um uh, next uh is uh i think uh, grace grace is going towards uh pax that's next to the rooster and she uh she looks at you and she says come come on Th these people don't have much are you you're trying to slaughter them i mean they're savages but you you, you mean the roosters the, the things we eat on the daily yeah ah yeah. i mean they're trying to sell it i'm not talking about killing the worsters or not but trying to I, I sell told the man i would buy it them i mean it's fine then like let's just hurry it i didn't hear that but Sorry. the girl uh she cares about this one in particular so oh, she'll get over it i think um gregory with kate next <laughs> okay so um uh seeing that um, uh my uh, party here is out for blood and uh, hearing the cries of the little girl, uh, I am. Um, I don't see yet uh, <laughs> uh, the actions or the breeze on your head. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I'll uh, tell you. You can knock them out without killing them, and I will uh, uh, do a non-lethal. Uh, attack on the one on the ground who's still alive yes mm -hmm. okay let's see uh, not on the ground on this one one oh, on the ground is also dead. dead all of yep. them three are dead is this, this, that one okay so um i'll try to throw hand axe not literally <laughs> how do you do that okay four. with the with the edge <laughs> with the, yeah instead of throwing it like that i throw it like with the bat, bat of it, okay. We should have bonk attacks. <laughs> oh, it, it's uh, it's not the one on the ground. No, no. Okay. You have to move. Uh, so it's uh, you, throw, you can you reach it, it. Melee easily. It's strange, but um, no, I meant I don't have advantage because it's not on the ground. I was preparing to attack the one on the ground, and that's a fourteen to hit. Hits. Okay, so um, I do non lethal damage. Um, six. Uh, six plus five, uh, eleven. Uh, no so, little damage. Yes, that means if it reaches yeah. uh, zero hit points, it's stable. You hit it in the head. Uh, it doesn't bleed, but it's a bit, yeah, going to to sleep, going unconscious. <laughs> uh, the girl uh, yelps, <laughs> uh, a bit confused. Um, but I tell the girl, uh, not. he's not dead. Mm? I think. Let's check. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a little boy, he also yelps. <laughs> um, and um, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I, I, as a bonus action, I'll have Shifty just uh, go there and. Uh, <laughs> uh, you see this blob uh, manifesting and, and uh, laying uh, on the chest of the rooster and trying to like give CPR, and it makes this very fun noise. Does he transform into um, like two paddles and like clear? <laughs> have, have I ever seen that sort of creature before? Uh, I kind of. Meanwhile, uh, as you do uh, that, like shark loops to you and like, you know that that uh, stern approval look. Twenty from the meme. Wow. Yeah. So okay, with the twenty, you haven't seen that creature, but it looks the texture looks very familiar, like. You could swear that if you would take water from the Sabbat water and congeal it and make it like a sort of like a fluid plasma texture, it will look so exactly... It's a blackish blob. Blackish, purplish, you know, with the Sabbat okay. waters when you put it in a jar or something. Has they a have like hero. indigo, sort of this indigo dark cool. blue. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. And that's my turn. Uh, so, next, before Kate, you see even 
like there's a sort of this trendy fashion and you would know Pax in uh, Green Spring, mm -hmm. uh, the trendy fashion of the storyteller. Uh, you see this um, 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 man or woman, you don't know, draped in a um, long dark cloth and, and c covering with his face with a porcelain mask that's coming on this side and just trying to see what's happening. Um, yeah, and uh, Kate, your turn. Kate sees that all the roosters are, are down, basically. She she didn't know, probably, that Gregory just knocked him out, not killed it. And just, she, she puts her bow, and she still you know, holds her, uh, her bow in her hand, but just bends the knee a bit and just takes, like, locks of her hair off the ground. And <laughs> in disbelief, <laughs> she just... Just smooth, silky oh smooth. You feel, you feel like your hand oh is my... so cold. You don't like it on the on the bold scalp of your head. Kate did previously experiment, and she was bald at a certain point. So she she knows that she doesn't look that bad with a bald head. And she's like, maybe now it's time to get a maybe now it's the time to get a scalp tattoo. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, she uh, just looks at the other, but kind of holds her ground there where she is because she doesn't. She wants to see how things uh, unravel. Um, the peasant man, uh, I don't know where he is. Uh, from where he's sitting, uh, turns and says more sort of to his. This is punishment for me working on soulless day. My wife was right, um, and then. After this is um, Jen. Jen will uh, walk on the cart vertically and across and tie very uh, neatly the rooster in the market fashion. You know when you buy roosters. Uh, so uh -huh. she's tying the legs underneath him yes. and the wings together. Uh, w w blood is spilling on the, ve the vegetables no. on the cart. No, no, no. I'm going to uh, take a piece of cloth and uh, just cover the hole in the artery so I uh, keep as much blood <laughs> congealing inside. You know, for uh, my Country. thing. And um, yeah, this is what I will do. And then put it on my back and go towards the. <laughs> Where's the Jen vendor? Is stopping and uh, yeah, you, you uh, can put a tap on it and just. And, uh, <laughs> if if I notice that some blood is spilled on the vegetables, I also pick the vegetable and go towards the vendor. Oh, the intention of nicely. buying. <laughs> yeah. Does this look as weird as it sounds that she's carrying this large creature on her shoulders? Uh, it's it's it looks exactly as it sounds. Right. You need a shopping cart. Uh, no, I don't. I'm very strong, uh, girl. Look at my muscles. Pax, what do you do? Uh, Pax heads up to the gentleman in, in distress. Uh, well, so how much for uh, the three roosters? Because your uh, daughter's favorite is uh, still uh, breathing. Uh, so. uh, you didn't move me. You're here. Do you want to move with the thing? Yeah, I go. I said I wanted to half go speed. Tor towards the... Half speed. Sure, towards the vendor. <laughs> uh, half speed there. Okay. He's a... Um, uh, it's a uh, free soulless and uh, five lunai. We're talking about roosters. They're big now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What I mean, uh, you lost three small roosters. Well... But they're big now. If you want to sell me the big roosters, you can make me an offer and I might refuse it. If you want compensation for what you lost, which were three little roosters, I can give you compensation. One soulless is enough. That's still way above market price, right? Look, you're... Asking the GM. Uh, a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe like 10% above. Okay. No, no, yeah, sure. <laughs> Expensive roosters. I uh, <laughs> give them a soulless. They're wild roosters. Um, but after this happens, the person who's carrying the mirror the, that Kate couldn't look into, um, it's sort of this, and it attracts your attention, is this diurnal creature. Like it's a very pure diurnal creature. 
It has, it's probably an Asimar or something. The Unals are the children of Lumino, the other god, the god of light. And it has this fuzzy, sort of a bit like Persephone's, but even more so, fuzzy features. You can't really disdain, it's the boy, it's the girl. Um, everything feels very light. And it's carrying this old, used to be golden um, inlaid, outlaid uh, mirror, but it's uh, um, rusted and, and old. And it's getting closer. Oh, None of this seems threatening. Something that's weird. Weird, but not threatening. Yet. Weird. Okay. Uh, and as it gets closer, um, the person says, Be my soul worthy to ascend as I shed this sinful body behind, and from beyond the um, mirror you see a familiar face you see a humanoid marked with um religious sign that is not the um, ancestral light which is the official religion of uh, lumena is the terrorist sign and you recognize with dark eyes dark hair the flame your uh, arch nemesis that you've been hunting he's beyond the mirror and you see sort of this uh, mass of red appearing from his mouth and charging through the mirror as he casts Firebolt and is escaping the mirror and landing in the mass right here. Fireball. Fireball, yeah. Oh. You said uh, Firebolt, you can't take it back. Fireball! <laughs> one right here, one the, picture, if it hits. Uh, <laughs> me, I move. 15 feet. <laughs> but now it gets it cooked. Okay. But it misses the favorite okay, rooster, like, like right? Let's see. Right? <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. right. <laughs> Everybody give me a dexterity save. Me, it, it's a rooster. magical effect, uh, right? Uh, apart from, okay, Kate is safe. <laughs> it's a magical it's effect. Bold but safe. <laughs> it uh, was a bold move. I will say, <laughs> could you guys say that uh, Fireball, also in the back right there, it will say that Fireball. It's a magical effect or not? Yes. Uh, unless it's yeah. a, like a Molotov cocktail. It's yeah, it's yeah. a magical oh. effect. So I have a four. You fail. What do we oh, do? This dex save. You have to oh, pass the no. seventeen. And yes. then there was only one. Kate remains only. <laughs> the bold Kate. <laughs> Survival of the gang. You would have lost uh, your hair anyway from the fire. I'm preparing the eight d sixes. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Did anyone succeed us apart from Kate? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. What was the threshold? Kate didn't succeed, she's 17. just not there. Oh my god, you have us at DC 17 at level 4? I mean... <laughs> the flames are did I tell? Did I told you that, you know, people die in this campaign? Yeah, no resolution, yeah. we know, we know. Yeah, we know, we know, we know. I didn't roll that good. It's, yeah, um... Cool. <laughs> Raise this body from the flame. <laughs> from the flame! It's a 12 and a 3. 19, oh, no. 21, 24, uh, yeah, that's low. 27. Not that low. Oh my god. Uh, so a 27 f uh, flaming ball just uh, hurls from the inside of the mirror, goes through through the, the, the urinal creature that was holding it. It instantly dies and explodes, and whoever is near it, Shock and Pax, you also get an extra. <gasps> extra? <laughs> 14 radiant damage. As you see this, his body combusts and his soul sort of permeates and radiates and takes shape and it's trying to hold on. You've seen this, it, it's called the ascension of the diurnal creature. They're sort of like preserving their souls. And if it holds, they ascend. If it doesn't, they do not. And it's sort of holding, but then at the last second, <laughs> it combusts and hitting you with the 14, I said, radiant damage. Any save against the window, sh the no. mirror shatter? No. Uh, the mirror shatter was the fireball. It's, 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 it's not, part of the... F it's not a mirror per se, it was a portal. But if we save from the fireball, we also save from this? No. It's a different effect. Okay. So, so the, fireball, the fireball, the fireball, uh, no uh, fourteen. It hits the 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 person, and it goes through uh, you guys. And also, then the fireball effect. It was a twenty-seven fire damage. Everyone apart from uh, Kate, uh, 
and uh, have, you have. have. Yeah. I would like to use my reaction to yeah. absorb the element as it comes to me. Okay. And I gain resistance to fire damage. Wow. And on the next with this, with I would absorb element. element this spell. You don't get the. Uh, Absorber, you don't get the resistance, you have to roll. Yes, you okay. do. Okay, cool, you get the resistance. So I get half. Okay, half. Uh, Grace uh, also saved, so it's half uh, 14. 13. Okay. Um, wow. So this massive bow just hurls the children. They're no more. The uh, peasant is no more. I was just his charcoals and his sweating and <clears throat> roll me again a one uh, a d10 but the important question do i draw him <laughs> still alive are you down, huh? are you down? Uh, the I'm roosters are now uh, fried roosters unfortunately mm. no! so like chicken. <laughs> the peasant the peasant man is the worst of all he starts uh, peeling like you see his skin oh, melt, melting melting and he he's just um bones right now okay. like melting bones and melting clothes and his um so in stand the also like gets 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 on fire uh, it's it's a very terrifying visage um it's uh oh my god raiders the of the lost ark <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> rather sad like you hear people in the <clears throat> distance not a terrorist attack the flame the flame Gods, 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 and you see like um, guards from the um, um, Red Kingdom just appearing. Uh, how do you guys look, guards? Green, green. The, the Green Kingdom. What did I say? The red, the, right? Red? The, the <laughs> Green Kingdom appearing and trying to um, to uh, take the individual, but they're looking through the mirror. Now it's uh, it's, it's sort of broken. Like the okay. surface is broken and the portal is um, Close. stopped. Closed. Now it's a regular mirror. Regular cracked mirror. Yeah. Okay. And the person carrying it exploded. Yes. Exploded as I described yeah, yeah, yeah. earlier, and yeah. tried to ascend and then exploded and hurt you guys. How do you guys look? Shocked. <laughs> uh, Shock is is still smoldering and has this incandescent uh, uh, light on him from the radiant damage and shaking and uh, barely standing. Oh no! Vaj. And what happened with the guy that was? Hmm? Vaj. He's the one who was trying to. What happened? To the to Vash. Uh, roll me a D D one hundred, and you roll me a D ten with uh, Al for <coughs> Albus' final effect before he dies. In, uh, in, uh, before he dies. In to, a uh, terrible, uh, uh, terrible, terrible uh, death, which is death by flame. I rolled a true zero. It's a one hundred. Yes. 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 It's you look for him. You can't find him anywhere, and. Um, you see him right at the rim here, like maybe he you slipped while he's while he you're petting the rooster or, or something. I throw Albus away and go to one bush. <laughs> <laughs> you throw the, the limp body of Albus. How much did you roll? A two. A two? And with the two, like the the last residue of uh, Albus uh, wild sorcerer's body, just no. Do I like, oh my god, cast fireball. I'm, I swear to baby Jesus, you, he, he cast fireball at third level centered on himself. Oh As my I, wait, god! I threw, him, I threw him away. <laughs> you uh, threw your... Uh, where does, are does you? Does he blow as, he, as I'm holding him or mm. as I'm throwing him away? I'm sorry, uh, oh as, as, as yeah, I think you're throwing him away, I, I would uh, go it like this. I swear to baby Jesus, this was <laughs> season two. TPK! Um, so I would K. throw him maybe 15 feet away. Okay. Take the fireball. But I will still take the fireball, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna throw him... Behind so somewhere, towards the buildings. Here. Yeah. Uh, the cow is dead. Uh, <laughs> what? The pumpkins are dead? No! Oh no! The cabbages, not the cabbages. But I look okay. Again, it's everyone just... apart from Kate is hit with this, unfortunately. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm gonna roll again Dex Isn't uh, Jennifer also? Yeah, because... No, no, it's no, no. no. Again, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, okay. Oh, oh, it's okay. It's not, no, 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 you're it's out. It's 20 feet radius. 20 feet? Ah, so that means, means it's four, four squares. One, yeah. two, it's it's okay, I can take it. Four, I, I four, actually four. don't look that bad. Ah, oh, Pax is out, Gregory is out, yeah, Grace is out, just, just Shaq, unfortunately, again. Okay. Wow. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mate. Uh, yeah, sure. Also, uh, one of the bystanders, one yeah. of the. No, they're dead already. Right. Okay. Cool. So you might you have you might Take have. Take save. Hmm? Mm? Take save. I fail it again. Nine. Uh, thirteen. Uh, twenty-one. Oh my god! I'm at zero HP. Drop. Shucks drops as another like fireball escapes from um from I think the energy I think the energy that killed Albus got stuck inside and just pff, exploded and this massive rush of fire and pain centered on him and catching Shuck and he's falling. What do you guys do? You're still on initiative and Shaq is dying. Like I you, drop. What do you do, Shaq, as your, your what are your last uh, words? Um I, I look towards the, the body that uh no actually Shaq no. is right that he will try to catch him. I would uh, look towards uh, Vash at the fountain and try to say something and I just fall like that and eyes still open looking towards him. Um what do you want to say to Vash? Because this might be if you're if no one has something to help you because it's a very strange world. Uh, this might be your last words. What do you say to Vaj? Wait, so no saving throws? No, we're gonna do saving throws, but we don't if know. Fail like if you fail, ah. what are your these are potentially your last words? Take care of Vaj. And as truck falls, yeah. He falls. Um, I'm getting emotional. Um, Do I catch him? Um, athletics. Uh, three. No. <laughs> You're trying to hold your arms roar with pain. You're burnt everywhere. You you look like a wreck. You just hear at this point noises and see um sparks of, of a flame uh, catching uh, in the commerce and you hear people screaming yelling um a lot of bodies i don't really want to get into that but a lot of bodies lots of stand buyers of all sorts of ranges from children to adults to elderly to innocent animals um as you're trying to do this uh, you can't hold him and he just falls limp on the cobblestones in the peaceful um, district. This should be the peaceful district. What do you do, guys? On initiative, I think we left top of the round with Shuck. Uh, death death save. saving throw. It's a fail. Oh my it's not a critical fail. Um, <laughs> Grace is next and it's get, she's getting close as you sit on the uh, on the floor. She's kneeling and she's thinking of something very intently, looking around. She's burned. She's barely standing. Gregory, what do you do? Well, uh, I'm uh, uh, pretty uh, badly injured, and Shifty is perfectly fine. No damage to him at all. He doesn't take any damage at all. He looks like like all the fire, all the pain, everything just went through him. New character Shifty. And uh, uh, you see Shifty going to Shaq and uh, he gives a part of him uh, to uh, and he puts it on uh, your skin and it melts into your skin and you gain four hit points. <gasps> By using which spell? By using second wind. No spell. Okay. Yeah, uh, my second it. wind uh, heals me and a couple of other, uh, um, a I couple of other um, excellent uh, allies. So, so, as Shaq is about to was about to see say his last words, he plummeted on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, people are starting to get the situation is grave. It's serious. Shifty Gregory comes with Shifty that sort of like melts into your skin and takes your form, if I understood correctly. And you got exactly as Yonut said, revitalized with four HP points. <gasps> uh, I I want to to uh, get up 
uh, look towards. Uh, I mean, I see that sh it's Shifty's thing that's covering, right? Uh, I, I can see Shifty is smaller. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I look towards uh, Gregory. I will remember this. Okay, so uh, I also get a. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, okay. Uh, Gregory. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, that was it. Okay. Um, and um, let's see who else got uh, attacked. Uh, uh, everyone so... looks very, very rough. I'm just going to remove uh, everyone that's not with us anymore, um, including the rooster. Unfortunately, you couldn't save them. Uh, their chuckles uh, are from these two. They can't be even cooked. Uh, Albus's body, like people start carrying them. And you know that in this um, town, in Green Spring, they keep the dead until the fifth day, which is the day of Sabbath, and they uh, do the whole right. right. Just one second, uh, before they take Albus's body, I would have wanted, like if you have a bit of spare time, I would have wanted to go quickly towards his body, because I would be very interested in trying to examine it a bit to find the source of power. Uh, you can you can go there. Um, he, you can go there. Uh, um, and in a second, go inspect it. Yes, and, and as I'm putting uh, my hand on it, uh, Shark's eyes like become like really bloodshot, and uh, I want to cast Vita's Cry on him. Do I manage to? What find... does that do exactly? It uh, it's like a, an MRI through his uh, anatomy, mm -hmm. and to see if there's anything in him, like foreign objects, uh, some sort of injuries that you know there weren't from the blast itself, something that might give a hint about what's so the you, power you in him. So you see that everything, you scan him from head to toe. You see that everything of his being, his former being, unfortunately. Um, emanates with sort of this strange power that you sense recently since you guys discovered magic mm -hmm. and that it exists and like his whole body is imbued with that but it's sort of this untamed wild magic and you think he was born with it mm -hmm. mm, would the others notice in this chaos um, if i cut off one of his him fingers a piece of him small piece a of stealth him. check you get advantage because it's chaotic outside. People are crying. Guards are coming. What happened? Whoa! Uh, they're trying to get the body of the terrorist that brought in the mirror. They're trying to examine the mirror. They're carrying the bodies. Are a lot of women are crying on the side. Ah, they were young. Mm -hmm. It's a nineteen. Nineteen. Um, Just a finger or something small that would not uh, be really easily not. like you. You cut the one of the fingers, which you'd prefer. The, the pinky. You pinky. You cut the pinky, pinky very fast in a swift and I move. Put it in my bag. With your uh, with the with the knife that you find over there, you you can even snip it and pocket it very fast. Mm -hmm. As you pretend probably to go and check its body and curse him, um, and in this chaos, amidst this chaos, you see the storyteller living unscathed. He nods. He leaves, um, and then we see a different garment. Um, a wonderful, gleaming one. Just this a sort of attire that's very neat and gold and shimmered. And I would like someone to describe me this garment. Wurz, can you please come in and describe your garment? A lot of surprises. Hello, hello. <laughs> I am here. Rotating cast happening. It's rotated. It's rotated. A bit more to the, to the, to the ra left, to the left. Cool. Describe me what your attire, your character's attire. So, what you see, guys, um, you packs would recognize, but you see a um, a very long, dark velvet uh, robe that uh, on it has a lot of golden motifs and uh, most of them um, depicting the various stars of the astrals. He also um, has uh, a very large talisman that um, depicts the um, star symbol of uh, Solis and uh, around his belt he also um, carries uh, these uh, sort of 
almost trinkets that are like uh, they they hang around his belt again uh, golden star symbols and um yeah all over his robes uh, he has uh, golden inlays, motifs, uh, very expensive, so to say, clothing, and um, a lot of also uh, jewelry and bracelets. Uh, please, Urs, describe me what your character is doing. He's come here to aid. Okay, so... Um, Just what he's doing. As he heard all the commotion and he's approaching, he um, just observed this and uh, he remembers the constellations that uh, shine bright on the previous night guiding him in sort of ways and uh, one of them was the constellation of the flame and uh, seeing all of the scenery he he's taken aback almost catatonic as he's trying to understand the message the more hidden and deeper meaning of what just happened here and analyzing and sort of correlating it with the stars and uh, all and so he's taken aback and he's just looking and focusing on the scenery um and as you see this character we're gonna just shift a little bit towards gregory who was casting with uh, Shifty and Saving Shock and... Yes, and also then um, uh, Shifty goes and... <coughs> sorry, and hugs uh, Genevieve and packs each for uh, 4 HP and um, uh, you heal from uh, this uh, bit um, as... Hebdon... Uh, uh, as... Uh, uh, not have them. No, we don't know <laughs> we yet. Don't know we who don't he know. Is. Uh, the previous have them. <laughs> the Urs, 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 Urs uh, makes his, his entrance, and then he go shifty goes back on my uh, armor. As as this Sabatus is, is approaching him, am I aware it will be beneficial, or do I assume that it's Sabatish and therefore dangerous? Oh what? No. This looks like Sabat juice. Not necessarily. We're I think. No, does Pax assume it's beneficial, or does he assume it's Sabat dangerous? <laughs> Uh, who? The, the, the Oodling coming. The Oodling. He comes yeah. to give you a hug. He, yeah. it, it seems very like you see the texture, but it's very friendly and it's it, it, it hugs you as it's, it's, it's touching everyone and you feel revitalized okay. and you feel that it's not harmful, but it's out of Sabbat juice. It's but a very. It's, no, I, I know <laughs> I will get to. I, I would tell it's beneficial once it touches me, but before it touches me. Well, it's before. Right. It has okay, like okay, this cool, very cool, cool, uh, cool. treasure island sort of morphy vibe. <laughs> it's very and cute. Probably, yeah, very you probably cute. notice the uh, revitalized. So it, it looks to be made yeah. out of the thing I know to be deadly, but it's cute, so obviously beneficial. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's fine. And it's, it's it like, makes for a nice oxymoron. <laughs> and as you get revitalized a little bit by shifting, you can now see plot properly, like the, the vision stops shifting and you can see the face of this man in this marvelous attire that's approaching you. And you see... Hebdo. Hebdo? Hebdo. <laughs> Decades younger, jet black hair, just two dyed, dyed uh, fashionably white strands in front. And you get to have your reaction as we take a break ah. <laughs> and see uh, afterwards what's happening uh, stick with us for the ads and for the things and uh, uh, watch them we work so, so hard on them don't forget to uh, subscribe like everything helps and we're gonna see you in just a few seconds minutes with ready more surprise yeah <laughs> ready to <laughs> have <laughs> Karina! Karina! There's uh, someone there? Down here, on your desk. Genevieve? I need to parley with you. The only plausible explanation is that I've stumbled into a realm where miniatures and their owners coexist. It is not the only logical explanation. For example, you could be hallucinating after being hit on the head by, say, uh, a baguette. Was I hit in the head by a baguette? <sighs> Don't be silly, no. Now, on the quest at hand, 
the cleaning. Wait, wait, wait. What? Did you get painted just now? Mais non, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I was always like this. A few seconds ago you had no color and I'm sure you had none of these beautiful highlights. But no, that is just part of my charm. Inside check. Okay, okay, fine. I've been painted, uh, but this is because I saw your shitty painting skills. <gasps> How dare you? I'm an artist. But actually you have very cool shading and reflections and look at this cute bow. I can never do stuff like this. Don't look under my cape, no! Put me down! Made by Rolling Hills Craft. Jen, is this who painted you? Let's investigate this further. Wow, look at this. This actually looks so cool. Oh la la, and this. I need pot so I can cook in. Has very nice details. Quickly, add it to the cart. Okay. Congratulations, you discovered my secret. You win a baguette. Wow. Now quickly, hit yourself in the head so you forget all we talked about. Like and subscribe, dear viewer. Like and subscribe. Not that I wish to imply you've been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a break than viewers, but all our efforts on this channel would have gone to waste, unless, well, let's just say your moment to like our videos has come again. The right viewer in the right place can make all the difference in the world. So subscribe, dear viewer. Subscribe and grow this channel. We return to the tragic aftermath of the terrorist attack led by the flame the front of a liberation uh, and ascension of mankind through embers. The, one, the once peaceful, relaxing district of Mercury, the mother, is now charcoaled, like agonizing screams in the distance. Ah, ah, my children, my, my wealth, my shop, my love. Screamers of green springers of all type from men to women to children to wounded animals echo in the distance Your eyes and and ears and mouth and nose they all sting and you can see just embers everything hurts everything burns um, The roosters are now back to normal size as the spell of Albus left his body when he died. Ears are ringing and I'm wondering what do your characters do in these moments of pain? Jen. Um, Genevieve feels on her shoulders uh, this rooster shrinking she she lost her appetite, she puts down the rooster, the stench, the smell of burned bodies, the <coughs> the smoke. smoke and it's it's horrible. Uh, she seems upset. Her eyebrows are frowning. she she's thinking about uh, Lumeno and their stupid followers uh, because. It, it looked like that astral being was, was part of Lumino's religion, so uh, she's very pissed about it. 
um, and um, also she's eyeing Heptum, uh, demanding answers. She she strides forward towards him. But before Hebdom came, what did you guys do in this three minutes passing until he came to help to check what has happened when, in the heart of, of, of Mercury? I want you to all think about this. When she she felt that second, uh, the, the first uh, fireball touching her skin, something something weird happened. She she absorbed it. She resisted it somehow, and she's she's sure that. Obscuro had something to do with it because it, it was against Lumenor's uh, weird crimes, and um, she's she's not that hurt, but she's still very very pissed. Uh, uh, she's shaking, thinking about the little girl and her father and the dead roosters, and everything is just spoiled now. Someone else. Uh... Kate was taken aback by all the flames, although this image was not new to her. She'd previously seen people being attacked and hunted, and she it's something she's dealt with for her entire life, just being on the run from people like this, and she just looks disconcerted as Shaq goes down and she sees that right before he went down he, he sort of pointed towards something and I look towards the well and I see Vaj just sitting on the edge He's so I, see the slithering a bit scared of what's happening I move uh, to the well and try to get close to Vice just to take him out of there. Does he let me? Animal handling. <laughs> it's an 11. So Vaj um, <laughs> slithers towards you and opens its mouth. You see two pointed, uh, give me an ager, uh, fangs. It's a seven. It's it's the fangs of a snake. Um, he he looks rather menace. Uh, he he looks like he's sort of in a defensive stance. He's trying to protect uh, his himself. Yeah. From I, I I turn my hand so that he doesn't get the impression that I'm trying to grab him and just extend my hand. Just maybe let him slither on it. He slithers back and he hisses at you. Um, I will take a portion of uh, something, some rations that I have, and just put it on the edge of the well. Um, what was the roll again? A uh, seven? The no. animal handling? Animal handling was eleven. Eleven. Um, with that roll, he gets a little bit closer and then smells it and retreats. Hides um, in a um, sort of a hollow space uh, above the, underneath the rims of the um, well. At that point, you feel like a hand on uh, on, on your shoulder, and I, I uh, Shakla Shak put, pulls you back a bit, looks at you closely. What are you doing? Oh, you're alive. Great. I was just trying to retrieve your little friend because I saw you looking desperately at him. I didn't know what would happen to you, so I couldn't just leave him here. I do have a heart, you know. Like, uh, uh, Shark maintains a bit of uh, eye contact, but when you mention the thing with the heart, like, he, he breaks off and uh, I go to to retrieve Vaj. Vaj uh, recognizes your hand, it um, slithers on it, coils, and it hides underneath your ropes. Mm -hmm. I take it and then uh, Shark looks, uh, looks around, like, being in pain, uh, but then takes uh, like uh, this, uh, this all of this scene like uh, takes uh, takes it in and looks uh, at all of the bodies uh, dead and uh, the the smoke the, the burnt cadavers the burnt, like you hear ah, and this look of slight satisfaction goes over his face as he's thinking that these humans don't control the power they have 
this power can be manipulated and all of this chaos, all of this chaos might be a ladder for him to turn some things around in favor. And he tries to, to conceal this, uh, this uh, hopeful attitude. Um, Deception. Do I see him smirking? Uh, inside, whoever wants to see him smirking. I uh, have to beat a 14. Wow. No, it's an 11. Uh, it's 21. <laughs> so twi- with the 21, Jen sees that uh, Shaq has this satisfactory look about himself and the situation, the dire situation you're in. And the last thing, the, the thing that you, you do see since you were watching me, is that like I, as I look over, all over this, um, you see that I, I, at some certain point I look over to Gregory and then my expression goes neutral and then I go back to the group to help with whatever they were doing. But that was the trigger that made Shaq's expression neutral. What do you all do? In the um, seconds after the explosions, because it was a sequence of three explosions. Um, I think just two. Ah, three. You're right. You're right. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Two um, fire uh, balls and. Uh... Bax is just dashing from burning burnt person to burnt person, just full rush, sliding onto his knees to push a bit of shadow into one of them, seeing if it wakes them up. Dashes to the next one, and tries again. Does this for for everyone that looks not completely carb carbonized at this point uh does he wake any up um give me a health of uh, medicine um and you're gonna have to beat a high dc uh grace is doing the same thing so you get advantage she's also kneeling going to person to person she's like Nine. Nine. She's also manifesting this sort of starry aura. She's speaking behind, also putting in a bit of shadow. With the nine, you manage to salvage one partially dying salesman. And when there's nobody left to try with, uh, he's just left kneeling at the last person he, he threw shadow into. Uh, is the um, is the little girl that um, asked you to save the rooster? And he's just on his knees, staring at the burnt body. She's um, she looks very petite um, in her statue again against yours. Um, she was still like sort of outstretching her arms towards the rooster. So, uh, <clears throat> once uh, Shifty comes back to Gregory, I uh, uh, look at Shifty and say, Can't you help one more? Mm-hmm. Nods and sort of plummets towards one that it's more salvageable and um, near <clears throat> end. Um, do you need to roll something? Give me a medicine. Do you need to roll something for Shifty, no? What? To, I to don't know in, what you mean. To pump in health. Uh, no, that was a one-time uh, ability. Do you have uh, other abilities? Uh, uh, no. Okay. It's a 17. So, so with a 17, with a medicine, with Shifty just uh, sort of smells the people, like tumbles and smells being like the whole consistency of the water of Zapat. It feels like she's attractive to... Or, could at least sense who died or who didn't, and she's pointing towards the ones that are still alive, but they're stable. She's not, Shifty is not, he is not doing anything else than pointing to the ones that are stable. Okay. Um, and I uh, look over at Pax and ask him, Pax, give her the rooster, give her her friend. He seems unresponsive as he keeps staring at the burnt ship. Okay, and then uh, Shifty goes and uh, pulls uh, the roster, uh, right next to the little girl as if uh, hugging him. 
um, they look like they're embracing. It's sort of this deep, sad moment. Um, guards come in, they try to help, Hebdom comes in, uh, and you see this person who you recognize from an afterlife, uh, but he looks younger, uh, years younger, decades younger, uh, no more wrinkly, dressed in this marvelous attire, um, and um, yeah, he uh, wants to eat. What What does your character do, Urs? What does Hebdom well, do? <clears throat> uh, I'm not that proficient in medicine, though, um, as I stated previously, um, he's watching this entire scene and his mind is racing trying to connect all of this, trying to find sort of a hidden meaning, especially that uh, he knows that uh, the previous night the stars show uh, shine brightly the constellation of the flames above. And um, in his mind, as he's just gazing over this, uh, almost like uh, uh, lost in thought, um, he believes that uh, he was probably meant to be here and that uh, he, people are always um, where they are meant to be. So uh, he's sort of a bit content, but in the same time, he understands the suffering. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm seeing you approaching and... Yeah, in the soul of this um, terrorist attack, right in the soul of it, you see five survivors, uh, one you recognize, five, six survivors, yeah. one you recognize. Uh, it's Pax. And then um, five other uh, people. Um, the elf with the. I would probably it. try to go towards Pax, but you said you'd approach me, right? I would approach him. Yeah, what do you do? I'm gonna outstretch my hand and starting to touch his shoulder in disbelief. Uh, put my palm against his face so I know he's not immaterial because, you know, our uh, religion, our faith uh, leads us to believe that uh, Lumeno is playing illusions on us. And just putting my hands awkwardly on, on top of his face and then say, Abdo? I, I shove it away. I... And then I bitch slap him with the back, <laughs> <laughs> with the back you... of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you betray us? Excuse me? What's the meaning of this? Who are you? Is his voice the same as Hebdom? Uh, inside. Seven. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you, you hear Hebdom Ten. speaking. Ten? Sixteen. It's close enough. Um, it's nothing like Hebdom's. Like, Hebdom's was very slow, sort of stuttery, old. But maybe it's because due to his age, I don't know. But it seems even like a different peach. Um, for Shaq. The two of you can discern. Ten and six. So seven. not enough to make me wonder. No. Okay. Would it make sense that it's Hebdom while he was younger? Like, would it be like a time With of... With the 16? Maybe, but... Maybe, but also could be something else. Yeah, you're just Shaq comes in very close and looks at you without saying anything as you talk to the others. So, after the slap, I'm... Uh, Excuse me, but uh, who who are you and how do you know my name? How did you survive? And you look so much younger. Did you discover the secret of immortality? Is Lucio still alive? And I'm poking at him. I'm taking deep breaths. This crazy person is just, <laughs> you know, saying. Can I do something within this interaction? Yes, please. Uh, please. What is Hebdom doing with his hands? So it is Hebdom, your name after all, is it? That's what you just said. Well, He admits it. Uh, no, just... Uh, okay, so your character. What does he character. do with uh, his name? With his hands? <laughs> the names. The packs say my name so light, lightly to everyone now. Did you just go over his question? But uh, <laughs> uh, I prefer not to be called by that name. I'm Adam. 
Okay. Uh, no, I'm asking you out of character. Oh, what, what do you, you do, do with, your, with hands? your hands? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm just probably just uh, nothing. No, yeah, are just, you holding uh, something, just... a stuff, <laughs> or a book, uh, or you um, your hand in your pocket, anything? Well, the thing is, mm, not that you see visible okay. on so, him. So once uh, Gregory hears Hebdom and then. Um, um, how do you know my name or something along yeah, the lines that you said? Uh, then said uh, the... I uh, look over my shoulder, see you, and then I want to rush towards the um, hand axe that I've uh, thrown earlier and try to <laughs> throw it at uh, one of your hands and try to <laughs> catch yeah. it up uh, um, so with you, the thrown attack. This man is going towards um, hand axe. He's taking it. He's throwing it, and at this point, please throw me an attack. Uh, and as this happens, you see in the distance, like one of the survivors that Shifty found, like it's a woman that goes, ah, my family now, and she's pointing towards some of the burnt bodies that, that were closer to the attack. Um, Cavalry comes in, the firefighters guild, healers come in and try to like CPR magic, um, magically CPR the, the the wounded ones. One man loses a leg due to the, the charcoal board burns. Um, and you throw an axe. For a dirty 20 to For hit. For a dirty 10 20 to hit. Yep, uh, roll damage. It, <laughs> it, it goes towards your hand. <laughs> damage. Can I try to catch it? Um, okay. does it need both hands? I mean, you can, I can allow it to, to, <laughs> wait, what should uh, I? Athletics, and you have to beat a 20, a dirty 20. It's an 11 slashing damage. Let's see okay. if, uh, it's 14. No, um, almost. Um, so, uh, Jen is trying to catch the hand axe. That it goes and slashes uh, the arm of uh, not fully completely, but slashes partially the arm of uh, of uh, yeah, Hebdom. Point in so. which some guards that uh, you see uh, green guards adorned with the symbols of the tree, and then the, the, the green tree and the symbols of green spring, and then you see the other type of guards. Uh, which you see Order of the Hebdomad written on their armor and shield and with stars decorated point in which they come towards you and try to seize you as you attacked Hebdom. Yeah, because I also uh, like I saw this attack and um, at that point uh, like uh, I, I look towards him um, and then towards the guards Guards, arrest that man. I have some questions for him um, a couple of people just uh, the the guards and a, a couple of people just yell. He attacked a hebdom, hebdom. He, he attacked a hebdom, and sort of like uh, now you have come to the realization that everybody knows who you are. Oh, a hebdom, one. A hebdom. This is what you hear, and uh, these guards, including Green Spring guards and the Order of the Hebdom and guards, uh, try to t start uh, um, um, converging converging and was the grappling you and uh, tying you and, and putting cuffs. I want to put a, a hand on, on your shoulder since I was close and wait a second. There is a reason he did that. Hear us out. But then I see also, are you Pax still busy? Pax. Rick's, he's not busy, okay. he's just Capital on his knees. Okay. Uh, okay. Not moving as he's standing. So I want to react to the grapple as well. Okay, what do you do? So um, I don't mind them when they first uh, mm -hmm. put their hands on me, um, but um, as soon as have them, uh, have them, uh, have them, or whatever, yeah, uh, says uh, what he says, I uh, struggle the guards and uh, tell you, why don't you come up close so we can talk? Um, and I want to struggle the guards. Okay. I, uh, I will say, uh, I'll talk to you when you are ready, not in this pathetic state you are right now. Uh, so the guards, uh, the, you're gonna have to fight off five guards at this point, and they're gonna go, keep like coming. Because, up. coming. Yeah, you're the only one like attacking in this aftermath. Which I'm is not big. attacking, I'm struggling the guards. Okay, you attacked the hebdom yeah. in this aftermath. So the first one, 
uh, you to escape that one, you have to give me um, a contested grapple. 13. Uh, it's above 20. Okay, so you escape the first one. He is a scrawny looking guard um, of the overdose of the Hebdomas. He's trying to put the, his hands around you, you escape that one. Then uh, comes a more sturdier man, uh, with a total of six. Uh, well, he lifts your, three trunks. So. Your, your, yeah, you're sleeping. He um, one. Then the fourth one is a 22. The third one is a 22. Uh, that's a 10. Okay, so the third one, which is like, uh, it, it, he looks like a knight of the order of the uh, Hebdomad, like uh, wraps his strong hands around you and uh, uh, binds you then with uh, sort of this magical rope and uh, turns, um, Mr. Adam Hebdom, what do you want to do with this? Let him go, you coward. Why don't you <laughs> face us directly? You know what you did. I don't know who any of you are people oh how convenient i would like to know why you are here i see you in the company of packs i don't know the meaning of any of this but i'm not in the mood to discuss with those who are driven by emotion please just i wish to have discussion with those who have clear minds please let's just solve this issue there are so many people suffering and then Let's address this and then talk calmly about the situation. We can explain so much. We have no intention of hurting you, trust me. Yet. Well. Um, should we deliver him to your home, to the prison, to the waiting room, to the order? How about you entrust him to us and we come and talk in peace? We will talk sense into him. I, I personally apologize for his emotional state, but we can talk this civilly, correct, Gregory? Gregory is absolutely stunned, seeing Shaq rationalizing the situation. Yes, you, honestly. <laughs> at, at this point, at this point from Gregory, like this dump emanates from him, this protruding smell of wormwood and honey just fills up your nose and your lungs and you begin like sort of shaking. Yeah. Manliness. <laughs> <laughs> just don't the take him away. Entrust him to us, we will bring him and we will discuss. Uh, we will we'll come together with Pax, your, your uh, acquaintance. I will take another deep breath and say, hmm. Well, is your friend there affiliated with any sorts of assassins or any sort of Gills, he as even as wears as the uh, tree sapling symbol. Uh, would I a recognize? Woman. Uh, he's a sorry. He's a, <laughs> he's a woman. <laughs> he's a man. I wanted to say a man. Uh, vampire English. I'm sorry. Uh, he's a man. Uh, would I recognize the the sapling? The sapling. Uh, history. It's a high DC. Gregory would probably look good in drag too. Yeah. Mm. History, of course. History. And he has red hair. He's a uh, he's um. He's a human a, man with red hair. It's a 22. 22? You recognize this symbol. It's the symbol of the founders of uh, Greenwell and then Greenspring that expanded into okay. what is the capital of the Green Kingdom. He is so, he's associated with the ones that have fought this attack and a bit shaken. And given our circumstance, I am very convinced you will understand our okay. plight. <laughs> So I'm, as you're still being restrained a bit, I look deeply, intently into your eyes. <sighs> <laughs> can get lost in that. <laughs> I see that your mind right now is clouded by many thoughts and emotions. Yet, again, I always say we are always uh, at the present place where we are meant to be and uh, I see that um, you might have been foolish in that attempt because you lack the knowledge I um, I'm interested in hearing what you all have to say you say you're rising above emotions, yet you use words. 
in that manner. I think you're a lesser man than what you claim to be. If you are not indeed related to what we know of Hebdom. <laughs> what should we do with him, sir? Says the older guard. The knight, actually. As a measure of good faith, I will allow this, allow this man to be set free. Are you sure, sir? Yes, as I still keep contact, eye contact with. Uh, he releases you. <laughs> no more eye contact. He releases you, Gregory, and then the guard, the old guard, makes this rude gesture, like she, he's watching you. Um, all of the like order of the hebdomads guards, and they have this inscription on them. I'll say uh, there has been already enough suffering and tragedy so far. Let's not make more of it. I want to go to that guard that is like doing the eyes and get like really close, close Can up. Can I help you, sir? Ah, you heard your boss. Move. Are oh, this your friend, sir? He was no. merely doing the same gesture to my friend here. But I'm, I'm a, I'm a man of Greenspring, you. Uh, you filthy beast. Yes, I'm not talking and to you, but he, he spits uh, here. Yeah. He yeah. spits and he like shows him for a... He showed compulsion at the beginning. Now he's being like openly not elegant. I saw his face. Yeah. Hey! Uh, and he turns his back and he, they start muttering something about you and what do you associate yourself with? No, I'll, I'll say uh, to him, um, what is uh, your name, good sir? Michael. Michael. Michael Bon Appetit. <laughs> do not laugh, it's my father's name. I wear it proudly. Indeed. Uh, I very well know the meaning of carrying one name and legacy with him yet um just for good measure i'd like you to stay with me for just the foreseeable future if you please uh, thank you he uh takes michael bon appetit apparently takes his side uh, uh, uh behind uh, hebdom adam hebdom and um, he waits there, visibly upset. Shaq looks like him smiling as, as yeah. this is happening. <laughs> and uh, he with his eyes. And Shifty comes to you and uh, does... Uh, <clears throat> and Shifty turns into a spiked ball. <laughs> 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 and goes beneath his armor on his back. Um, on Michael? <laughs> on uh, that, that guard. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Bon Appetit, he starts like, <laughs> Sir, I'm not sitting here to be mocked of. <laughs> and well, then uh, Shifty gets out and uh, uh, jiggle, uh, giggles. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you can be Michael. Sir, I can't do this. I'm sorry. I'm gonna send... It's fine. I'm, <laughs> gonna, <laughs> send, I'm gonna send someone else. <laughs> he gestures towards Peter. Peter... Um, yeah. Greyhound is his name, and he yeah. uh, comes and takes uh, his place. Peter is uh, also an o old, sturdy guard. Can we please, like your friend here, be all rational and just dismiss all this childish play? His pit. I do not care about his bad manners. That's a matter of the guards and their discipline. But pray tell us, where could we meet and talk? at a later date when spirits have calmed down. Hmm. Um, are there any uh, taverns around in Cloud District? How what? Taverns? Uh, taverns. Taverns? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, there are some taverns. Um, uh, taverns that usually have bathhouses in them and sort of like... Yeah. Uh, Ooh, sauna. um mm. Saunas. Uh, the most exclusive ones are in Silent Bay. It's a bit far, further away. Um, or you have a thematic tavern, the Stag's Head. Uh, on the Stag Alley, which is not far away. Oh, it's near about Bat House. Where, where do you want to go? 
Okay, um, so um, how about uh, uh, talking like civilized people? Uh, let's uh, meet at uh, Silent Bay in a few hours time. How many hours? Uh, well, midnight should come pretty soon. You, you, you do have moonstones. Of for... course. Uh, what do you think of us? Uh, that we're peasants? Uh, usually don't... in uh, Green Spring, uh, since it's solace uh, night and it will, yeah. Right. But usually in Green Spring, not all of the moonstones. It's not like the... It's not a place or a time that Green Springers, usually humans, Green Springers, uh, set meetings in at night. More, it's more like a more of a, a nocturnal thing, uh, and you can set it in the morning or uh, go now until okay. it's the sun is up before well, curfew. First of all, I'd like to inquire. I see Pax over there. Are you with him? We are, but I believe someone needs to get him out of his cathartic state. I, if you are an old acquaintance, you might have will. the best chance. I will approach you. Uh, um, you see Max. this uh, woman with uh, short blonde hair, vitiligo marks and, and, and butterfly dress modestly grace. And she says, if you need any help, I'm, I'm here. I, I could help. You a priestess of any astral, by any chance? Not a priestess, but I know some magic of the astrals. I'm gifted, yeah. Good. Um, let us uh, see what's wrong with our friend there. And, um, uh, Grace comes around Pax and sort of puts an arm on your shoulder. He doesn't move. He's still staring at the... Um, now the, the, the guardsmen and uh, knights have moved through, cleaned up, but there's still a burn mark on the ground, and he's still seems to be staring at that uh, black area catatonically. Pax, are you alright? Do you need something? Mm -hmm. Pax, are you with us? Do you need a drink or something? No, fine. Uh, it's fine. not your fault, you know? It's no one's fault. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. What? What? You have to snap out of it. Take it to the orphanage, please. Really. Um. So you want me to go? He gets up. Take care of the kids or whatever you do. Do you see my presence? You, you see him. He, he starts getting up. Okay. Looks around, but isn't really registering people per se, unless you. Because uh, I was thinking of doing something. I would um, take an astral copper piece. Yeah. Uh, just mingle it a bit in my fingers. And um, I'd like to cast Detect Thoughts on the packs. Do I roll anything? Yes. A, um... For the surface no, first, thoughts, no. First, yeah, for the surface thoughts, no. So you feel everyone's surface thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. You can go around and like check. Well, I'm now mostly focusing on Pax. Um, we'll wind up getting her killed, just like everyone else. Hmm. I will um, approach you, um, say that... Um, I don't know. I know it has been quite a tragedy that transpired here, and I'm actually curious on finding out, but not fret as uh, from tragedy, tragedy and suffering. You may come out stronger. Yeah? Is that, is that how uh, Saturni teaches us? Uh, all death is where it should be to make the living stronger and all that shit. Hmm? Turns around, starts walking away. You've also noticed the complete lack of accent. 
Oh, nice. Let's get down. Um. Um. Gray says. Yeah. Oh. You, you want more surface thoughts? Or? I was yeah. thinking of. Yeah, go deeper. go around. So who do you want to focus on? Um, focused on uh, are you focusing like trying to invade the thoughts or just the surface no, thoughts? Just no, just surface thoughts. Uh, though, uh, to be honest, I won't do that since uh, I'll uh, wait for Pax to anyway. get uh, back to his senses, so to say. But uh, yeah, just surface thoughts on the rest. Oh, putain, Pax, uh, accent was fake and I'm also wondering if Mr. Bon Appetit is a French descendant, I have to ask him. Elven. <laughs> yes, Elven descendant. You said Elven. <laughs> no, it's fine, Elven. Okay. It's el yeah. You say Elven, what did I say? Hmm. Um, Shaq is uh, really calm as he's, you know, he's, you see him like looking at the, the bodies and the suffering and the, you see like, there, like he looks at it and there's nothing really um, going on, gone through his mind. He's completely uh, impervious to any of the suffering. Uh, however, you do feel a small sense of relief when his gaze uh, passes by Gregory that is being released. And then he just surveys the area. I uh, look at you and uh, you sense uh, nostalgia and then the feeling of being betrayed. Then I look at Michael as he's uh, moving away and I have an urge to smash something attached to him. And then uh, Shifty comes back to me and uh, uh, you feel me warming up uh, uh, all fuzzy and uh, wuzzy to, mm -hmm. to him. So there's a mixture of feelings in Kate's mind. She looks at you and she feels disdain. She feels shocked and sad because she's also thinking of her best friend, which was robbed from her by somebody who looks like you. Uh, but she's really confused on her uh, feelings and on top of everything that's happened here and she's also feeling so angry for the way that guard treated Shaq and she doesn't even like Shaq that much but she still felt that as if it was done to her because well, people treated her kind of poorly and there's just a lot of mixed feelings and He's about to blow up. Um, uh -huh. Okay. Well, I have to say, I am curious on the reason, on, on how you know me. Though uh, I propose um, we head to the Silent Bay to just uh, relieve our, ourselves a little bit and then probably have a uh, more normal conversation. All right, but you're buying. Right, I will. Um, and, and while well, this happened and you agreed to go on a silent bay, Grace is running after Pax. Uh, she sort of like um, roughly turns him around and says, <coughs> I know you're mad about what happened, it breaks my heart too, but you don't have to be rude about it. And what about these people? You're leaving them here from the past and you, you, yeah, you took responsibility. And also don't take it down on the Sabbath and the Astrals. Don't be a dick about it. What do you want? What about these people? You just you brought them in Green Spring with fake IDs and your fake marks and you're leaving them here? Fine, after I... <clears throat> uh, after I address the other knights, I'll be sure to um, uh, see about our guests as well. And their uh, continued security. Look, I'm going home, but I, I want you to take responsibility of the, over them or leave them to Monkey or whatever. But you, you said you're talking, taking them in Persephone's or something. 
keep the little ones at Yogare indoors. Make sure they're not out in the districts. Uh, I'm not a maid of the Augury orphanage, you dick. Uh, you, you care even slightly about the children there? I do care about Good. the, the then children. Do that. Because if. Guys. Do you think they listen? For fuck's sake, he's killing kids now, you know? That's, that's how this works. So you're gonna keep the other fucking children inside the fucking orc and uh, please. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Please. Go. She's visibly upset. She turns. She doesn't even say goodbye and she, she goes. He goes coordinate with the other knights about uh, how they're gonna, what they're gonna do about this, what's happening, immediate operations. Uh, and then just check back on the group looking across the square to see what they're doing. I want to yell towards you, uh, since you, you were quite far away, right? Okay, I catch you when I turn. What about the permits? The ones you are holding for us? Oh, it's okay if you wanted to say something. Same thing? <laughs> Uh, it just makes this gesture. Okay. The Grace notice his accent change, or did she know? Inside. <laughs> it's a very subtle thing, but I, I think we can manage. Do I have to roll as well? Because I said it already. It's an eight. It's about Grace. Like, um, Grace, like you, you saw they fought. Uh, you sense a bit of tension, but they were sort of far, far away. You even, I, you can't see the reaction. Like she's, okay. she was very overtaken by this. And I was probably more focused on having them. Yeah. Than, uh... yeah. I walk towards you and uh, extend a, a hand expectantly, and I even force a smile. <laughs> <laughs> I've given you money. Not the money, the permits. If you go away from us in order to, I don't know, uh, go on with your cathartic state, I can respect that. But if we are caught in the city without the permits you have been holding for us... We can't even move from this stupid killer district. The district is not at fault, but rather those targeting it. Um, I will finish my work here, and then we will go wherever it is you need. I am not ready to give you these. I do not trust you. Um, and uh, we shall see uh, if you are worth trusting. Eh? I wonder oh. how many terrorist attacks do you need us to help you stop in order to be trustworthy? Oh, you help me stop the terrorist attack. Thank you. So many children saved by your assistance in stopping the terrorist attack. Good job. Wait there. He goes to the knights. Too shit. I think he has huh? a point though. What is his point? What more could we, we have done for we this? We didn't stop anything. And yes, of course, it wasn't our fault that this whole thing just went sideways. Because in well, in all honesty, it was his ex that just sprung his giant roosters on us, right? That is perfectly... I agree with that perfectly. It is his fault and he is just dumping his feelings onto us. Do you think that's fair? No, of course not. Only but... someone with quicker hands could... do I... us some justice. I, I could do that, but I don't think that's the right approach in earning his... Neither do I. I was just throwing <laughs> away ideas. Right. You were just throwing away ideas and finding a way to th throw me under the cart. <laughs> <laughs> are you eh? thinking that uh, you are not skilled enough? Oh, of course I thought I'm you skilled had that enough. one redeeming quality. Uh, please, don't play to my ego. I know who I am, okay? Someone but, that cannot get this done. Yes. Uh, uh, well, if you're so smart, why don't he? I, I'll give you the tools. Why don't you get them? I'm perfectly fine in waiting for him and trying to see where we're going. Because I have failed. I am oh, not a skilled no. thief. I would not know how to tie my shoelaces properly, but you. Are you wearing. You have shoelaces. No, I don't. Haha, <laughs> 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 made you look. <laughs> No, um, I won't be stealing them. Maybe if I had succeeded, now. I would not have suggested this to you. But that was just an idea. You can just ignore it. 
And of course I wait. And just starts ignoring him and turns to the rest of the party. Um, time passes by. The, as everyone leaves, Genevieve stays behind, changing her mind and packing the two roosters. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, it must be very quick. And how do you do this? What's the mood? The, the mood? Uh, like... Everyone is crying, me and me too, I'm very sad, but uh, I can let this rooster go to waste. It's been so long time since I ate uh, Coco Sang. Do, do I see her? Uh, perception. You do you want to be stealthy about it? <laughs> Just a Stealth. little bit. And as this happens, uh, Pax, you go to speak with the, the, the uh, guards. Natural one. <laughs> okay. Relax. The, seven. <laughs> the guards of, the, um, of, the, of Greenspring. Uh, you speak with them, they're organized, uh, they, are, they even tracked where the mirror was supposed to end and for some reason, I mean, they knew about the attack and some reason the mirror stopped at this marketplace. What do they know the plan was originally? Uh, originally the plan was to go to the Diplo Hebdom University and explode something there. And how did they, why didn't they stop it if they knew it was coming? Uh, they sort of like lost the guy and mm-hmm. intercepted it, uh, you know, later and to, to yeah. Um, Pax discusses how they should do patrols, how they should interrogate, who they should interrogate, what can be done uh, for They security. already have some people, some um, um, followers of the flame um, caught in. Uh, they talk about the guy who sacrificed himself trying to ascend in the five flavor of the flame, but the the ascension, like the materializing of the soul into a sort of an astral being, didn't go through and he exploited. Um, and they think, and one of the um, uh, sub-officers tells you, like in a bit of a um, hollow voice, broken, um, we think uh, he might have stopped because he saw you. So. When, when you have the results of the interrogations, have them sent to me as well. Don't kill them, but up to that point. Well, we're taking them to the um, to the uh, deep pit prison to do the interrogations there, sir. I'll await your missive. Hmm? I'll await your missive. No. Did Did you say deep deep? Deep Pit Prison. Pete. Oh, but you're not there, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, of Johnny Depp and Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was my plan all along. <laughs> <laughs> Once uh, he's done coordinating, he'll head back to Um They say that probably the results will, will not come until um, dawn, at least. The, you know, the six hours of midnight is approaching. The dusk, the long dusk is almost over and everybody's like trying to go inside homes because it's curfew. Um, they don't want to upset the astros. Uh, it's the first time a, a terrorist attack happened inside the Mercury District that is heavily regulated. Usually this and the soulless one are the like most guarded. They're upset about it. On his way to uh, heading back to the uh, to our esteemed guests, he grasps the blade and um, mutters really low. Um, he's burning even kids now, and then just sends that and let's go. Oh, you see here a f- soft. I'm sorry, hon. And then join them. The, did we have time for like a short rest in the meanwhile? I don't know. How long? It's been five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, five minutes. Yeah. Oh, um. Dusk is setting fast. You have approximately by the side of your, the side of the sun, uh, 45 minutes until it's night and everybody starts you see people start starting uh, talking about the attack and the fact that it's so close to to sun, so to sundown, um, and um, yeah. Um, so we're heading to Silent Bay. Okay, so as you go towards Silent Bay, uh, people start, you know, uh, muttering and whispering 
you see a have dumb, have dumb, have dumb. Have you heard about the terrorist attack? Most of the people close their businesses, lock themselves, and because curfew is coming, and uh, and Silent Bay, everything feels serene, but not really. It's vis-a-vis uh, -vis the shish about uh, 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 rentals, and it's uh, it's a sort of a small but very flourishing. Um, um, tavern called the Silent Bay Tavern. Uh, the owner rushes you guys and tells you uh, she, he has to close in 40 minutes. Don't you have uh, rooms here for the night? Do you want to spend the night here, sir? I suggest uh, we do. I'll pay. Not pay enough, but fine. Uh, okay, no, I'll, I'll try to stop that. As I understand, you're not the one that we are upset about, but might as well. He does we'll... look a lot like him, doesn't he? We'll talk once he's inside. I, uh... it does. I do have a few ideas, probably, of who you might be yet. Uh... We'll see. Um, so a room, how many rooms would you require? A room, a decent room for two people is uh, four gold pieces. A single room is three gold pieces. A room for each. For each, one, two, three, four, five, and, uh, six, um, four, plus four. Hmm? Oh, so it's three for each, uh, okay. 18 uh, solely pieces, please. Sure. Uh, will you stay with us, Max? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so I pay for everyone. How much? 18? 18. Make sure to have the warm baths, uh, baths ready. Um, and perhaps could we take dinner in a private room? There are sensitive things to be discussed. Uh, sure, you can take it in yours. We're going to offer you a mansion in despite of a humble abode. Uh, each of the rooms has a separate uh, bath and bath place. We're going to send maidens to. Do you prefer milk baths or steam? Or... Hey, would you mind the milk bath? What's awesome milk That is bath? being paid for. Goat, what it goat like. or cow or sort of like a wild animal milk. A wild animal. Okay. What you said 16? Some... Uh, 18. 18. Uh, six. No, 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 no. 18, yeah. 18. 18. Bring some souls to the baths. We are all scorched and burnt. And I show her, like, skin that is falling well. off. Sure, salts, uh, milk, uh, wild milk. Why are we wasting so much milk by bathing in it? I was thinking the same thing. You're not by any chance giving it to people that need it. If <laughs> someone comes in here, and is hungry. Do so you, you find them? yourself no, in very, very funny it's, company. It's company. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's Those very funny. Those basic needs are accommodated for most of the people. Are you, are you, uh, are you sure about that? Because earlier, someone that is now dead was complaining about having only four r roosters. Gregory, I think, I think we're the poor ones. I know that. Okay. That's not a problem. So, um, rooms, rooms, uh, seventy-four to seventy-five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And we meet for discussions in seventy-four. Yes. yes. Let us uh, take a moment. Um, to... the um, the solis meal with the golden uh, pheasant and yes. the 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 bubbly wine. Of course. Uh, excellent. Could I make one request? Mm. How about uh, we are all getting baths with milk? Is that my no, correct answer? No, it's just a lady who asked. Um, okay, mm. then I would like to also request one, but instead of having the milk in the bath, could you deliver it to uh, the orphanage? Of course. In uh, canisters? Of course. Uh, which kind of milk would you prefer? Goat uh, or cow or something wild? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's go with goat. Goat milk. Really fantastic. Uh, is it going to be an extra uh, uh, five lunai for delivery? Of course. Yeah. Um, I can pay it for the 
delivery. It's fine. It's I, I, I uh, have done more play. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Uh, yeah, we'll oh, thank you for the tip. Very generous. He pocketed it. Um, please. Yep. I'll, I'll put another uh, soul lesson. He's not in any trouble. Can I have my pheasant uh, very rouge, you know, like in blood, not very red? Well. Um, sure. Indeed. We're gonna do that. Okay, see. That's how we used to use Do I understand her race? Um, nature. Um, 17. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. You've seen it before. Not very many. I know the gist of it. Yeah, but you, you know that she's a vampire. She's half elven, half uh, something with lineage across the line of a vampire. You could ask for the uh, bleeding. Itself. The bleeding pheasant, yes indeed. We have a lot of wild animals here in the here in the cloud district. It is prepared for this some way, no? A, l- a little bit, yeah. Okay, let's try your bleeding pheasant. And she frowns. <laughs> cool, uh so we're gonna see you in the rooms. Uh he yeah. goes prepares it. Yeah. It's the most lavishing establishing the establishment you guys have ever been in. It's rather small, but it has this sort of orange aura about it. Um, you go inside Hebdom's room. It's a, a fantastic, uh, f- a festive uh, dinner set with pheasants of any sorts, with cakes, with breads, with uh, pla- platos of cheese and grapes, uh, and a fuzzy, bubbly wine that it's just exquisite did we manage to have like a bath and everything before uh, yeah. yeah do you want to care to describe what you're doing in the rooms for a few do you have I a want small box and a rubber duck <laughs> <laughs> like I if might... anyone would like to describe something like uh, i was actually interested if can we take a short rest yes okay perfect uh, uh what will happen while uh shaki is uh, soaking in the salts would be that uh, he looks at his clothes that are um, all bloodied and uh, and messed up, and um, he seems to extend a hand, and as he's he's shaking and trembling and feeling some sort of pain, uh, all of the blood from the clothes just kind of fades away, like in dust that's raising up to the ceiling, and then poof, it disappears. Very cool. That's all. I'm gonna take my short rest. Before taking the bath and the milk, which I never did, and Genevieve is very excited to do so, she will pluck the feathers out of the two roosters, uh, slit their throats, and let the blood drain naturally uh, into bowls. In the room, so you're making sort of an organized, dis- yeah, yeah. An organized Impro- kitchen. improvised kitchen. Exactly. And then um, I'm going to take a bath and clean myself. And milk, which is very, very nice and gentle to the to the skin. It smells uh, wild, like a deer. I hope it uh, does something to my burned hands from all the cooking I done uh, apparently four hundred years ago. <laughs> oh, it's very moisturizing and nutritious. Um, anyone else? Do you want to do something specific? Uh, yeah, uh, I presume we have a bathtub. Mm-hmm. It's an exquisite bathtub made of like sort of this uh, precious material. It's squeaky clean. It has all these intricate symbols of mercury and it's steaming. Everything has to be steaming have, uh, and have heavy perfumes. And it's already filled with water. Yeah. Uh, do I have uh, a mirror? Yeah. Okay. You're bold still. I'm bold still, yeah, and I, I just sit there. I think there's a sink also. And as you, yeah, and as you touch, you, a little bit of hair starts to grow, just Wait, a little huh. bit. Look at that. A fuzz. Yeah. I was just getting used to. Yeah, and then just take a look at the bathtub, like this might because I'm used to taking showers and we didn't have bathtub. That, that's for sure we used to. I don't know. We had a somebody with a bucket of water just <laughs> helping us clean ourselves um, and I just dip my finger I said it's it's hot but in a pleasant way so I just start taking uh, my clothes off and you can see scars here and there uh, and markings all over the body and as I 
want to take the, the pendant off, but I take a look at it and just take a look in the mirror and just leave it on. And, gen and then just submerge and, and the water just sit there, contemplating. You submerge, you think a bit of what you lost your days before this happened, of Yarek, of your tribe, of the little girl. It's painful. It's painful. And I fully submerged like underwater because well, I'm, I'm not going to drown. But That's <laughs> so cool. What do you guys do? Pax is underneath the magical waterfall at the side of his room. Uh, and, and as it's washing him, he's gesturing uh, letters into the air. Uh, one goes to the Marthis district barracks to coordinate uh, with their operations. Another uh, sends intelligence to, to people that um, study these organizations in the Solis and Mercury district. Uh, another heads to the palace to advise on steps for uh, security of that district. Uh, he sends um, the dean of Midnight University an update and what they should be careful about. Uh, and finally, also sends Grace one with uh, a, a short apology for being abrupt uh, and then a more heartfelt ask that truly though the priority is until we know this won't repeat keeping the kids off the streets. And then when he exits the shower, uh, he'll gesture with the feather and he will be in green spring and military attire, not armor, but uh, the officerish uh, clothing uh, that uh, knights usually wear. And then head to Adams for meeting. Um... After approximately 45 minutes, one hour, uh, it's already midnight outside. Um, everything feels silent. Uh, everyone is inside. Um, the silent bay tavern and inn seem to be almost vacant. And you meet in... Uh, oh, the colors change. So nice. Um, you meet in Hebdom's uh, room. Adam's room, actually. Um, and you see... The dinner, the lavishing dinner, and you're all squeaky clean without any, you know, residue and smells from 435 <laughs> years ago. Um, and you, you take a seat, you eat, you drink. It's exquisite food. Not the most exquisite food you've ever had. I wanted to ask. No, no, it's not. I mean, this is horrible, but with a <laughs> smile on my face. <laughs> You cook way Disgusting. better. Disgusting. Yeah. Oh, this cheese not even aged that well. Yeah, the, the cheese and the pheasant at least not 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 as you prepare them. Yeah. Who's your cook? <laughs> I'm sorry if it's not precisely your taste, but uh, you should visit you should visit the Solis district once. They there's where the most exquisite things are in this city. Looking forward to be disappointed there as well. <laughs> Um, oh, Adam, uh, long story short, uh, our new friends here, roughly uh, 400 something years ago, upon the eve of the uh, great uh, embracing of magic, were involved in a uh, ritual to do with the uh, granting of said magic to mankind by uh, uh, your ancestor, the host. And uh, at some point, as an offshot of that, found themselves literally stepping hours later to the front of uh, Green Spring 400 plus years later. Perhaps I can give a few more insights on how this has happened. Please, I'm curious to hear all that you have to say. Yeah. Uh, Shark looks like really engorged and refreshed and uh, has not eaten anything and uh, looks really, really strong and confident. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> We have followed your perhaps ancestor or what to call it, together with Lucius, the one that is in the statues. At that time, he was a wild man, nearly more than a beast going to the woods near Green Spring. And uh, your ancestor has led us to a cavern. Greenwell? Greenwell. Greenwell, yeah, Green Spring is this one, sorry has led us to this cavern where upon going through it we have discovered this 
river of black water that is similar to where you take your dead. There, Martis, Martis, Martis has shown up and has taken both Hebdom and Lucius as their champions to perform a ritual to get humans out of being the last in the food chain and has banned everyone outside of his aura that he used to teleport whoever was inside to an unknown location. When we have stepped out, we have been greeted by this new world. Hmm. Let me put an emphasis on left us for dead. While kidnapping my best friend for nothing. Well, technically, I think you just went along with the book. Not, not you, sorry. You just look so much the same, except for the hair and maybe the voice. I, I'm not really sure, but... He's way younger. He's way, way younger, way, yeah. yeah. Well, 30, 40 were, years at least. Yeah. Just went with the book and Lucius had the book, that bloody traitor, to which we all hate. As you can see, <laughs> the least you could do as the ancestor and benefactor to all of this. I see that uh, you are no, not a mere peasant here. The least you could do is take that tax and that cut. I mean, it looks like uh, the weight of my family heritage has uh, finally caught up with with me, with us. As um, to be honest, and this is known only in my family only, that um, if it helps or anything, it's that uh, Habdom, from what I recall the tales of my ancestors, Habdom, the one who brought this, he felt regret for those accompanying him. Yet um, he did. Mm. Yes. Yet he has abandoned them to death. Um, well, he did... still uh, wanted to accomplish what I believe. I mean, you're Gregory, right? Yes. Yeah. So you've heard of him. I believe nice. uh, Gregory and Lucius wanted a um, way to, let's say, uplift the human race. But at the expense of all the other races? Let well, me see that what I've seen so far does not make me be happy about these descendants. Bon, uh, three things I need to clarify at this point. Number one, because you are walking with me. Uh, I don't know how it was back in savage times, but nowadays when somebody uh, cuts somebody else for something their daddy or ancestor did, that is not acceptable. So there will be none of that uh, under my watch. Well, bon. Number two, um, you seem awfully hung up on this relationship with, with uh, Hebdom and the betrayal you suffer. It matters for Rian. Yes, it's been 400 years, everyone is dead, you have your vengeance. You're alive and thriving, they are dead, it's done, it's settled. Three, you want to do something, you don't like how the city is moving, très bien. Uh, there are things that can be done. Well, you've seen that murder in the square, you see the problems the city have. If you wish to better this time you find yourselves in, I can gladly uh, assist you uh, in doing so. Well, but this hang up on the past, I okay. understand. First Betrayal all, is heavy, but... Yes, and you're being slightly insensitive since it's only been like what, a couple of days for us, since everything has happened. So maybe, maybe we need just a little more time to process everything. And yes, constantly seeing the people that betrayed us, like first Lucius' statue, and then we find out that bloody bastard got a fair death, which is not cool with us. And also seeing, well, Hebdom's heir, and I, I, I get what you're saying. Yes, maybe he shouldn't be punished for his what his ancestors did. But we we are still owed some explanation on maybe or maybe a bit of a bit of help Would to you... find out what happens to everybody um, we love and we lost. Mademoiselle, quick, Kate, a, a simple question. 
what would you pick between getting uh, to go back in time and get vengeance on whoever the fuck you want vengeance on, or uh, having uh, shot your arrow into the gentleman with the mirror? I can answer Just that. Me. No, no, no. Problem. I will answer that since I, I think did the lady that. can answer for herself. What? Right? You're upset on what I did, and I will bear the answer to that. No, I asked the lady a question about her priority. You're upset that I threw an axe at Hebdom? No, that's simply Adam. something I told you to never do again. Okay, but and what does this have to do with anything? How was I supposed to know that the I'm guy with a mirror... You. No, no, no. My question was not, do you feel guilty or are you to blame? I'm asking, what would you pick between this vengeance that seems to be consuming you and having had the, not responsibility, but the... No. Magical foresight to have prevented what just happened. What would you pick? Pax, you're Honestly. asking the wrong question. Yes, exactly. Nobody wanted to attack Adam, not even myself. I attacked instinctively when I saw Hebdom, or yes. what I saw, thought was Hebdom in that moment. We did not know even if it was the, the original axe. Hebdom who has lived for so long. We have given you your cathartic moment. Why don't you let us process our feelings exactly. as well? We had to go through, so, so we have to work with our feelings of knowing that all the loved ones are dead and we've been attacked in a square by your ex-boyfriend. Which is not and, 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 Pax's fault. Which is not Pax's fault. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know their relationship. Maybe w one time over drinks, we can discuss about that. And then we were all attacked by some lunatic with a mirror. And... Honestly, I would choose neither vengeance nor shooting that guy. I want to know what happened to my loved ones so I can get over it and move on with my life. What is your answer to my question? I asked you, would you pick one thing or the other? Yes, vengeance or killing. And I said neither. Neither of them. You wouldn't have prevented what happened in the square if you could? Uh, what? That's that's only theoretical, uh, and yes, I, I a... don't see the point in discussing because my vengeance could be swift, and I maybe could just revel in killing Adam here. Hypothetically, I'm not going to kill you. It's it's fine, you know. But I'm just saying I don't want to kill anybody anymore because I understand there's I been 400 to, years. I have to ask theoretical question to understand you people because if you're well, going to not answer theoretical questions, I have to keep putting I, you into situations. I, I, I am I am telling what? you exactly what I would do. Why discuss in theory if I can tell you practically what I would do now? See, you're not listening. Because to my me. question is not what you wish the question was, but to answer the question I actually asked. Let's calm ourselves down. <laughs> the question Let's doesn't eat. make Let's any sense. Drink. You know what would help me drink? Better and sleep better at night. If you tell us how Lucius and Ebdom died, I have a feeling that they might not know the exact I, way I they think died. Let's it try. Something like a very bad disease. If it would help you, yes. I can say that Lucius, in his final years, I think four or five years, he went mad. Yes. Wow. Why? Great. Probably so from all that tree sure. bark he ate. He, well, he was barking mad. That's it. <laughs> and right. the other one? <laughs> and the other one, well, my ancestor, he didn't live too much longer after he returned from his journey. Captain was pretty old. Um, he only had a few more years to share his teachings and try to put uh, order in things that uh, at that point in time nothing made sense and uh, it was also the help of the astrals that uh, helped shape what it is today d'accord so see they die suffering clay's close to salut and let's drink to their deaths so. mm. it's a shitty wine i love it <laughs> uh. <laughs> This is this is what shitty wine tastes like. Oh, yes. you've never had piss before, have you? Of course not. Why would you drink piss? Because it's we were real. poor, Jen. <laughs> you have no idea how we've lived before. <laughs> That's why we think wasting milk on bathing yourself is well is a waste. the only <laughs> opportunity I have to bathe myself in milk. So Don't you haven't you... done it before? No. Don't oh. rape this experience. Okay, for fine, me. fine. Be a waste. Shark looks straight at Pax and, and he says, Stopping the man in the mirror, provided that would also get us a spot in this society that you have built here. 
I don't think we have any kind of interest in being outcasts more than the prejudice of our appearance. Uh, some of us already makes us to... No, I, I would not go that far. To ask you to face him to earn uh, your access is way too high a price. I wouldn't ask you that. Uh, should you find yourselves, after you accommodate here, interested in assisting against him, you are most welcome. But uh, no, you do not need to risk your lives for these documents. It's merely to understand that you will not harm the city. It's fair enough. Um, I don't know about Hepdom and Pax. Pax woke up a bit later, but you guys feel very tired. Uh, because you, you know, last time you slept, you were in the woods. <laughs> uh, the other midnight, so roughly 24 hours passed. I will, I will only say that uh, I understand you all need some time to get acquainted with this new world you find yourself in. And, uh, but um, what I'm saying is that uh, I uh, do feel the necessity to guide you in this world if you need so. And as such, probably together we can strive to imagine a bold, new, better world, yet to still be aware of uh, to keep sight of the current reality no offense here um we don't know you and like i earlier said that act was not intended for you specifically though I, based on what you heard i presume you can imagine how we would have a very hard time putting our trust Indeed. in you we we barely do that with Pax, and he has proven himself up until this point, even though now he's uh, grieving himself, and we can all understand that. I think we're putting up with Pax because he has the, you know, papers. Uh, even before, we put our trust in him to uh, get us, to, to be our guide in the city. And he has. He has, he has guided us. Choice. We on. had choices. We always have a choice. Choice was going away from the city and not learning all of this. Of course. And this is exactly the reason why we're so upset on uh, Lucius and Hebdom. You always have a choice. I see. It, it is true. So is your name really Hebdom? Or... It is Adam Hebdom, yes. Like your uh, surname? Family. <gasps> <laughs> Cracks me up every time. <laughs> What's your favorite Karima quote? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, again, all I'm saying is that uh, I'm here for you whenever you wish to know more about present times or you need any sort of guidance or help with the order actually just let me know yeah we might find a few questions i i think it's it's not only the present time that concerns us if there's any way to find archived documents maybe to learn what happened to the civilizations from our time, basically, because this is a huge transition. And yes, maybe uh -oh. Green, well, I don't know, we transformed it to the Green Kingdom, or at least that's what I'm piecing together. But I see someone interested in the history. Well, um, oh, well, <laughs> for, for you, it's history. For, I propose for me, the following. Yeah. How about we. I'm sorry, did the middle of my sentence interrupt the beginning of yours? <laughs> Please go ahead. I won't tell you how we get access to the things you want. Finish. All right, but it's rude to interrupt, and I think you've done it like a couple of I've, times. Um... And but I shall again. But how? No, no, she... Please, no, how go she ahead. Is the wine? Eh? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> very, very. This shitty. is the one of the best wines I've ever tasted. The second best. Uh... Of it's the course. second wine you ever tasted. <laughs> 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 Technicalities. Um, so you were saying about how we were getting those documents. Well, I propose that uh, we all uh, 
head to rest. In the morning, we convene for breakfast with whatever uh, discussions we need to have. Uh, and head to the university where we can uh, peruse the core uh, documentation that exists there on the histories. I can hope. Sounds like a fantastic idea. I have a very weird request. Yes. Can I wake up like an hour early and maybe you discuss with the chef of this establishment so I can borrow the kitchen to cook a little bit of quelque uh, chose for myself? We'll, we'll ask and see. Fingers crossed, eh? If anyone needs to talk in private for any reason with either Adam or myself, our doors are open. I yes. do. Knock. What uh, room are you in? I won't. We know which one has which room. Seventy-nine. Right? I won't go to yeah. sleep any any time soon. It's uh, <laughs> Luna is day is coming, and mm. there are certain rituals that must be done. <laughs> okay. So you go each to sleep, and unless anyone wants to do something specific, okay, we do it in order, okay. starting with. Uh, you're, we're gonna raise hands. It's mm-hmm. Jacques, Jen, uh, Gregory, Hemdom. Cool. To sleep. Hey. <laughs> um, Jacques will go to to his room and uh, <laughs> wait a bit of time in the which... most marvelous room you ever saw. And I, yeah. not impressed. Don't don't really care it's about any of that. <laughs> yeah, <but it's... laughs> and uh, a bed is a bed. He, Sleeps under the bed. <laughs> uh, he will do like a few pacings around the room nervously and uh, think about something really intently and go back and forth, back and forth. And after a bit of time, um, he will take a, a, a deep breath and go outside from the room. And uh, I would like to head towards Gregory's room. Okay, we're gonna come back to that. Uh, Jen? Uh, I would like to steadily go uh, around the corridors and knock on Pax's door. Okay. Do, do, do. Uh, I just sit there in the hallway and I say, pointing with my finger up his nose. I know your accent is fake. We shall discuss this later. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come in or? Okay, fine, for a, for a little bit. Bon. I have wine. <laughs> yes, I do. I have wine from 40, 400 years ago. Imagine how good it is. It hasn't aged. It has experience. <laughs> it was aged before, so it's good. To, it's better than what we drank. Clubian, come in. Okay, Why you not? come inside. What do you do? J'accuse. <laughs> no, uh, my accent is exactly that of Nocturna Obscura. He, he switches to Elven. Uh, I saw you sleep. My ears are very sharp, sharp, and I point you towards my pointy ears. What you need to understand is, my lady, that fastly I have to regularly engage in a number of accents for a number of contexts. Mm. Hello, uh, there's a bunch of them. So this is your cover uh, pretending to have uh, this accent. This is how the streets know me. Well, mm. this is a bit suspicious, but I would let it slide. It's how it works. You have to give the people what they expect to see. Where they see sharp ears, you give them nocturnal mm. obscure accent. D'accord. Okay. But it is my nocturnal obscure accent where I was born. Okay. D'accord. Okay. I'm satisfied with this so explanation. Explanation. Tell me about your family. Um, I hope my family is still alive. We are going Tell me to... about uh, what it was like, and we keep talking. Yeah, until the bottle of wine is. Uh, and over. then, what do you do afterwards? I go to sleep. Before you head out, yeah. uh, after the wine is done, I do ask you. Uh, I am going to perform the rites to obscure now. Would you like to join? Of course. What is that? If you're not obscure, right, you, they're probably familiar, like, just the, the nightly... Uh... Nightly rites, you pray to the god. Yeah, so we did that, usually. Yeah. Okay, fine, sure. Let's Join me on the balcony for the meditation. Of course. 
We meditate together beneath. The... About what it means to have strong matter, to tether yourself to the ground, to tether yourself to the strongness okay. and materializing things. Sort of that. Um, and this, afterwards, you go to okay. sleep in your own rooms. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Um, Hebdom. Uh, I think it was. I, I think we're gonna go back to Gregory and uh, Shaq yeah. afterwards because this seems oh, to okay. be like okay. a thing, and I want to like uh, close things. <laughs> so, oh. Kate, you're not doing anything. You're sleeping. Absolutely. Marvelous sleep, <laughs> and you're uh, upset. What I'll do? Is <laughs> sleeping. I'll, uh, <laughs> sleeping with my fist. <laughs> I'll still um, uh, stay up, even thwart myself if need to, mm -hmm. uh, so that the three hours of midnight pass and goes into the lunai uh, day. The officially is the lunai day, the seventh yeah. day. Yeah. Um, and, um, best day ever. Knowing that uh, on uh, this day, uh, not only people are encouraged to stay outside during the midnight and observe the night, the skies and all that, and but also um, it's also favored to take practice in uh, rituals and all that stuff so i will prepare my uh, ritual now that the sky is clear the sky is clear you can okay. see the moon peaking uh, waxing moon yeah. beautifully the night is I watching would, uh, over say whatever um i would know of a prayer to mm -hmm. uh, lunai but then um i take my astral deck mm -hmm. And um, I will uh, lay it uh, on the balcony in front of me and uh, we'll start uh, thinking on uh, the words that uh, my uh, father has taught me and all to always carry it with me. And uh, I'll say, uh, to always look up to the stars for in return they would look up for me. And um, I spread all of the astral deck in front of me and um, as I meditate and focus my eyes uh, flash and the constellation of the throne and that of the key mm -hmm. will uh, just brightly sparkle for a brief second. In the distance you see the throne and the key. And uh, I look up to them, takes a moment, interpret, it, interpret them try to get accustomed with what what message they're trying to convey to me and yeah spend a little bit more and then head to sleep and after this you go to sleeping because you're also tired yeah. coming back to shack what are you doing okay uh well, i want to sit and make very sure that a lot like a lot of time to make sure that there's no one moving between rooms so that i get a uh, the last uh, thing you hear is Jen, and you peek down the peephole. Uh, you see Jen just coming drunkly from Pax's room with an empty bottle, uh, saying, uh, Putain, I tripped. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and entering <laughs> this shitty here, and entering <laughs> uh, her room. And after this, it's quiet. Perfect. I want to go to Gregory's room and. <laughs> <laughs> and what is Gregory doing so until now? Getting ready for shot. Um, <laughs> we can just skip up, up, uh, over that because it's no longer possible. So, okay. Let's continue with. Okay. <laughs> is the room locked? No. Okay. Are you trying the. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, just enter. Okay. Okay. As I as check under, is Gregory awake? Yeah. Definitely. What is Gregory doing? Um, so he's uh, he he is uh, in his bed uh, with the mattress moved aside and s sitting in it and looking at the ceiling. Mm. <laughs> okay, as I enter the room, I do this <laughs> to me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Please stop laughing. <laughs> And like in a lower tone volume. There is something very difficult that I wish to ask of you. I require help. I I lift up only my uh, neck. 
um, you can cut all of the surprise reactions. This is difficult to ask for. I, I worry. And I uh, get up on, uh, on the side of the bed. Okay, I, I go on the bed and like sit next to you and say, um, since the cavern where we went and got transported, I have awoken some sort of power in me. There is, I, I can feel bodies, I can feel blood flowing through others. I can even master some control over it. And I take a dagger and cut my hand. And as I let it drip, I, I move the other, my, my hand and I, 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 the blood just doesn't fall to the floor. It stays me, me there. And that, then does a few circles as I guide it through the air. And then you see Shifty. What? And he mimics uh, the flow of the blood that you do in the air. <laughs> um, and as that happens, uh, I, I, I immediately, when I dismiss it, you see that blood just vanishes uh, in, in me there. And I continue. I have seen these powers in some shaman in my tribe. They were ones that did a ritual of augury to preserve the knowledge of our folk. It hurts and burns on the inside to ask, but I think you were the only one who would understand the need to search for family. I, I also had someone. And I'm sure that my kind does not live that long. And I'm sure they have been extinguished. But I need to know what happened to them. You see, your blood is special. It contains power. Sick of being special and helpless. You are not neither. You are not helpless. This is a request that you might very well deny, and I will respect that. But what exactly are you asking of me? There is a ritual I can conduct to find out what has happened to my loved ones. It requires a few drops of your blood, and the rest I will provide. <clears throat> of course, I will gladly help you with that one. I thank you very much. Uh, however, this has to be done near some Sarah trees. They are the ones that are native to areas of the Redlands. I don't know how they ended up there, but the forest, as we were looking at the city, near the Cloud District has those kinds of trees. The ritual must be performed, performed there. We need the letters from Pax to get back in. Uh, we have the moonstones. They're not enough? Hmm. Now, I'm sure that Pax would be able to help us out in case we run into any difficulties. But I am not trusting of the others to, to know that we are doing this. As I said, it's neither easy nor would I want them to further uh, prejudice my visage with also the knowledge that I have these powers. Well, I can just as easily go in and out, but you on the other hand... Ah, just, I'll find a way. Okay. We will set up a meeting point where we can reconvene after this. I, I will just take the blame. I did not, no longer wanted to be in this filthy place. I took a walk and I forgot about the whole incident. It's fine. I will get uh, another way inside. Let's do it. Uh, uh, Shaka actually extends a hand and uh, uh, do you shake him? Shake, shake his hand? Yeah. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you uh, doing this. Um, and uh, I, I look towards Shifty. Like uh, with this disgusting look at her face. Is that one going to get a scot or something? Um, Shifty, as you scowl at it, uh, sort of like retreats, <laughs> tumbles in the air, and just goes under the pillow. Pillow, just hides. 
I'm wary of that. Why? It's, it's harmless. Yes, he has spawned off the, the, the water that has tried to swallow you. I'm not sure how that works, but I think it was right before that creature appeared. It is made out of the same material. Uh, so is water. Regardless, uh, we should go. After you? Okay, I want to check. Like we, uh, I want to check like really careful so that there's no one uh, seeing us uh, going away, mm -hmm. and uh, head towards the direction where. Uh, uh... So you exit the room, you exit the establishment, you have your moonstones, and I'm gonna ask something very strange of the rest of the cast. Uh, you more proceed to lift off your chairs and go home, and we're gonna take a quick break for you guys. You're not gonna see anything. It's gonna be a fast cut. We're going to take a very fast uh, break and see you guys in a second. See ya. Welcome back, dear viewers. We are here just with Shakla Shak and Gregory as they're off in their side sort of adventure. Um, they sneaked off um, the Silent Bay in a uh, tavern and um, they are proceeding to go through the Mercury District, going meandering on the streets. It's silent at night. Um, some of the guards stop you, check your moonstones, they're glowing. You advance and advance towards the very end of the district, where you see this enormous gate, bigger than the gates of the Jovis District. Like, the whole wall that surrounds this district, it's made of enchanted gates where you can peek through the green forest and behind the green forest you see all sorts of creatures and wildlife from four foxes to wild rabbits to stags and inside it looks like the green forest is spilling inside the district and seamlessly integrating inside the architecture and you go and walk and in no time and I don't know 30 minutes 25 you're outside of the district no one checks your mark at the exit you're uh, free to to go <coughs> so basically it's uh, kind of like a seamless passage from the city to the forest yeah and uh, does it look like an area where, where it would be like the final checkpoint where we maybe would have problems um, yeah, in exactly in the reign of the enchanted disenchanted huge gates there are about uh, five or so uh, gates and there's a checkpoint but for people entering no one is checking you exiting so it's not easy to re-enter with like it doesn't look like there's an easy route to re-enter definitely and you see that beyond this checkpoint there's um outside in the forest there's a row of huts with guards placed and stands uh, and you know vigilant and checking who wants to um and <coughs> might sneak in this uh, very interesting area uh shock will take a, a glance at uh, the gates and then turn towards gregory you have mentioned you were the architect of your own settlement at the, at one point. The one you suggested we visit at after the caverns. Is that correct? Architect. Fancy word. All I did was take down a few logs, put them one on top of another, and try to help people as much as I can and people seemed to do the same afterwards they helped each other did you know that that bastard Lucius was eating tree bark on a daily basis when until we find we found him or until he found us and we were glad to help him and I would do it again even knowing what he is. Shaq gets like, taken aback by this. <clears throat> Why would you trust him like as an individual again after what he did? You're just inviting more, more betrayals to be done. You're confusing trust with giving help. What have you gained from all your help, Gregory? Look, he is one of my kind and he proves to be more hateful to me at least maybe not for for all these folks 
But for me, it proved to be more painful than all the beast folk apart from you. And you, you are nothing like your fellow beast folk at all. You are the exception. Just as Lucius was the ex exception for humans, as far as I choose to believe anyway. Even Shifty here, for example, you say he comes from the very elements that that creature was made of and tried to attack us. But Shifty is nothing like that creature. So Shifty is with us, right? Uh, uh, Shifty sh is with us, apparently, yeah. Uh, it's uh, always uh, with me, and um, he's um, uh, uh, floating above my shoulder. Okay. Do you not see the parallel that you are making yourself between Shifty and Lucius? You are trusting something that you do not know where it came from, and exposing yourself to be betrayed, and... For what? I'm what not are you trusting. I, I'm genuinely asking you, what are you gaining from all of this? What is it that you find to be so valuable in your trust? Did you know that before we, before I knew Hebdom, Alea had no idea how to treat a wound? Hebdom, having a bit more knowledge, he helped teach a few of us, and Alea healed my wounds many times. What did you offer him so that he teaches you all of this knowledge? Nothing. He did it because he felt part of the community. You, you clearly see some sort of, of look on, on Shakla, Shakla Shak's face that he's trying to process this and Whatever you're saying, like this feeling of community and helping each other, is looks very foreign to him. I can see that. I can see that you're not really understanding my meaning. How about um, I explain this to you a bit further? You see, our companions, <laughs> you definitely wouldn't trust, uh, uh, wouldn't trust Kate with a knife next to you while you are tied up? Or maybe you do? Of course I wouldn't. But you've trusted her with more than that every day, each day? Just by being around you, by your saying, invited treachery at every step, although it never happened. More than that, your companionship, dare I not say friendship yet, has evolved because of a simple act of selfless trust and helping each other, helping his her friend. Uh, you, you see like Shaq trying to, to, to counter the argument and then like with the frustration uh, he, he drops it and uh, uh, he continues on another line saying uh, you have no idea what creatures that are bestial in nature, by your meaning, uh, have done to each other. This trust that you exhibit, this does not exist. Do you know what goes on in the fear tribe? The mindless cretins that would rather eat each other at every opportunity than cooperate. I can certainly understand it. At one point we were hunting in the forest, it was just me and our uh, village hunter. We never shared this story with anyone. We were attacked by humans at one point. We had to kill them in self-defense. By humans? Humans attacked us. They wanted to rip the meat off our bones even before they had bested us. Why they were hungry. That are doing this? They were at some point, I hope, with all this advancement, with all this <sighs> deprivation that I keep accusing of the of, of our values, 
on average, I have to accept that it's for the better. I don't think there are many people, many humans attacking other humans for the meat of their bones anymore. And although I only saw one incident and I have no evidence that it ever happened outside of it, I'd rather not have the opportunity to go through that again. Even as, even as I stayed in my room tonight, all I kept thinking was, I want to go to Adam to talk to him about his forefather, Hebdom, about who he is, about how what he did. betrayed us. He heard enough of that. He should also know the man that he was before that happened. He was one of the few I trusted. Um, and as Gregory keeps and has this piercing speech, like um, a perfume so exquisite and delightful that speaks to your bones and to your skin, the same smell of wormwood and honey is so enticing, it, it curls deep in your body and it makes your your insides just twist like he exudes so much of this this strength and, and power and even in the words he's uttering um and also please uh roll me a d6 one of you two um cool thank you uh does anything happen or can I? Not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, I stay silent for a bit, uh, a few more steps as, as we're walking away and uh, um, it, it's dark, right? Right now it's, yeah, it's okay. dark. Okay. It's dark. It's, Do you have uh, a torch? It's the day of Lunai. I have some uh, sheets and oil that I borrowed from uh, our previous uh, Encampment establishment and uh, Persephone's, yes, from Persephone's. Okay, and I um, um, go and uh, pick a branch, a solid one, and fashion a fan of torch, and I, uh, I uh, manage to light it up eventually. There, so you can at least see what you, where you are going. I also wondered about the city. Uh, my pre my question, I uh, got sidetracked. The humans, do they make any kind of shortcut into their city, a sewer system, any way to get in other than the gates? You know, there is also the difficulty of someone like me re-entering the city without the permit. You're asking about Green Spring? Yes. I wouldn't know. What about in Greenwell? Did you have something like this? In Greenwell, we barely had crops and we were on our way to build the wall to enclose the village. Sewers. Very strange concept. Um... No. And you, as you're walking and talking and have now vision about your surroundings with the torch and also Shakla Shak has a little bit of dark vision but you can see 60 feet in the darkness I think um, you can see two things um, sort of shadows can you give me a perception check? yes um, also yeah. okay it's a 9 19 19. Uh, Shakla Shak is uh, very enticed by something that he smells in the air. You don't know exactly why. He My keeps looking... sniffing and, and looking sideways, but mostly at you. He's very focused at what you have to say. But you, Gregory, see two things. In front of you, you see like a small creature on the road, just... And you can hear like a small sort of a squeak. And then backwards, in the back, you see 
a humanoid um, dressed in the same attire that you kept seeing through Green Spring is one of the storytellers with a drapey like uh, black attire face covered in porcelain a mask he's just walking or they are they are just walking you don't see no if they're female male and the creature in front of us yeah what do, I, I'm not sure uh, I understand what it, it's I a see. creature in front of you and it feels like it's it's something that's squeaking in the grass a small thing There's someone behind us. Uh, we see Shag really nervously looking behind. Do I also spot the 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 humanoid behind us as uh, as I'm looking after Gregory told me? Um, come again, sorry. So uh, as Gregory tells me that there's someone behind us, do I also spot him? As, uh, you turn around and you see one of the storytellers with the long drapey um, attire, with the mask, just walking. Could you remind me where else we saw the story storytellers? In, in, inside the districts and also he, he was one of the um, ones that checked after, before. Uh, at the, I think you remember at the um, when the uh, roosters got enlarged and they were sort of attacking you, uh, he came in and checked. He checked. He checked what's happening, yeah. So he just oh, so he was one of the ones investigating um, what happened, basically. It was, it was maybe before um, the attack, the terrorist attack. He just came and checking while the rooster situation was happening. And we so, can't tell if it's the same one. No, because you've seen this individual's dress throughout the city. So just like went in, looked at us and then went away? Do we know anything else about them or just that? Uh, so? Pax, as you could talk to, you learned this bit, is sort of this new fashion because of a tavern in, in one of the districts, in the Augury district. Um, this, new, this new fashion and the new tavern of the storytellers where everybody wears this white mask and this long drapey sort of shifting robes. Mm -hmm. As I told you, I am uncomfortable about the ritual. Best get out of the way of that one behind. Uh, we should not be far. No problem, just careful not to step on the rabbit in front of us. Normally I would try to hunt it down, but we have plenty of food. As you pass by, you see that's not a rabbit, it's a um, squirrel that has its tail um, stumped on maybe from a um, carriage that passed by and has a bit of a wound and it's tr tr trying to, um, to to crawl. Okay. Um, Shifty, let's let's see if we can help this one. Um, and, uh, Shifty uh, appears, <laughs> sort of smiles, uh, then makes this worried face, sort of like an oversized emoji, gets very close to the scroll and uh, tries to lift it. Ah, poor thing, bring it here. Can, can you heal it? I doubt I can heal it, but I will try my best. Uh, I'll use Vita's cry to look and s try to figure out if its bones are cracked, if its tail oh. is dislocated. <laughs> sort of the bone and the, the skin and the muscles and the... Um, um, joints from its uh, buttocks to its tail are crashed uh, by a carriage or something very heavy that has gone through it. Would I figure out that if I were to amputate the tail and make sure the wound is closed, would that... Uh... Medicine. Okay. Vita Scribe gives me 1d4 of medicine. Yes. Once per, per creature. Oh, yes. It's a 21. Okay. Uh, definitely, that would be the first um, the, one of the um, one of the solutions, and it would be the quickest. The other one is to like sort of make this um, I don't know how you call it jeeps in, in English Cast. casts or something to support the the tail until it it recuperates fully. Since I do not figure we could care for it, an amputation would be the solution. If uh, you're confident in that, I'm confident I'm willing to try. Okay. I'm getting a dagger and really quickly uh, cutting, cutting it, it and then pressing the torch while holding the, the, the poor thing. But you know, with, with care. Uh, give me a medicine and an animal handling. 
I will help him uh, uh, hold the squirrel. With advantage, since Gregory is helping, but please describe me how do you do that? So, um, I try to uh, um, to hold his head in the palms and trying to um, to hold its uh, uh, claws, uh, its its front paws, mm -hmm. which would probably give me a lot of scratches. And with my other hand, I would try to hold um, uh, the bottom uh, half of the squirrel, so nothing else gets cut. Uh, she starts scratching your skin, you hold on. How much did you roll? It's an 18 on the medicine. Okay, so with an 18, uh, you hold it, um, the wound, she, the tail gets cut, the wound is cauterized, um, it's not bleeding, She, she, the creature is yelping, and then the animal handling? Oh. And uh, crying and pain. 22. Uh, but you two, between you two, with advantage? No, I with rolled advan a natural 20. Oh, okay. So, with advantage from Gregory, Gregory is holding it, uh, you're soothing it, you're singing to it, or, I don't know, doing something else, but it, it's working. The two of you collaborating on this, even though with all the scratches, it doesn't scratch that much with that roll. Uh, okay. It sort of understands that it's the best for it. Uh, and as you make and do this process, uh, trying to help this little poor animal, um, the storyteller passes you by and goes ahead. And at the point, it turns its head and then continues walking. Okay. I would uh, keep the squirrel with us and uh, in my... Uh... Could you please hold either the squirrel or the torch? Can... Oh, Shifty, yes. Can carry it. I would not want to squish it. Um, Shifty um, smiles, takes the scroll, and sort of gestures uh, towards the town. Like, would it, you would know that it's saying sort of, you, would it bring it to Greenspring to care for it? That's actually a good idea, Shifty. But, um, it's not. Uh, do it, uh, do it high in the air. Uh, I'm not sure how guards would react to small creatures unattended for. It and not? Uh, take it to, I suppose, well, Pax has enough on, on his mind. Wouldn't risk uh, Genevieve uh, making a uh, squirrel or something. Either of our rooms would be fine for it, for the moment. It should be oh. up and running in the morning. We shouldn't care for a wild animal that much. Yeah, take it, take it to our uh, and <coughs> If Kate happens to pass on by, you can you can show uh, her the scroll. It nods. Okay. And as it nods, um, it takes the scroll in the air and flies by. <coughs> Have I ever told you why I am sympathetic to the cause of simple animals? Never. I never knew... Well, I suppose you gave us a few hints, but I never knew it's so important to you. It is. The sense of community you are describing, that is not the way of the beast folk. That is not the way in which I had the opportunity to grow up. But animals, they are simply simple to understand. You go to a squirrel, it is going to run away from you. You go into the territory of a wolf, pa wolf pack, they will swarm you. But you know all of that. There is no deception, there is no lying, there is no emotions involved, just instincts. It is pure logic. That is to be appreciated. It gives the mind a break from all the plotting, the intricacies. Ah. That tree right there. We can stop by that tree. Um, okay. You advance at that tree. Do you want to, do you want to say something? Yes, I would uh, like to say that. I did not grow up in the environment I told you about that we had in Greenwell. Far from Springwell as it may be. Though I know a few things about how what you're describing can make an impact. When I told you about the humans that attacked me and the hunter, Mike, 
He was never the same after that. He was always... Sometimes he wasn't even helpful, but we depended on him. He had been left with traumas regarding what other humans? Yes. As he should have been, he got attacked. He retaliated. That is a sign of strength, of power. He was always reluctant to go on hunts from there on. But he still went. We needed it. Ah, so what? He, do, he did it for you. Other humans who would do the same to him. I only hope that after uh, Lucius, after selling us and coming back to the to Greenwell, I hope Mike never had to hunt again. At least there would be that. This is confused look on, on Shark's face as he opens his mouth to say something else. But then, like, really defocused, he looks at the tree and says, uh, Do you have any kind of tools to wipe up some bark off of it? We may begin at this one. Yeah, sure. How much do you need? Just enough to hold a bit of liquid. Okay. And I do just that. So you go at the tree, and near the tree, it's sort of this clearing. You start uh, gaping at the, the bark. And from a distance, in this clearing, you see a cave. And you start hearing this grave, great coil approaching. And a colossal dark mass starts slithering and advancing towards you through the tall grass from the depths of a nearby cave. It's so large, and as it comes towards you and gets larger and larger and longer, you feel, because you can't see its end, it could encircle the whole world. It has this great lupine head with a long, thin, serpentine tongue and the most intense orange eyes you have ever seen. Um, in the moonlight, its dark shadow, its dark scales become iridescent, and it's approaching you guys. Damn, that's a big one. You think that's what they're breeding for hundred years? You see, uh, Shark not responding to your uh, to your question, and and looking at at the the snake and. The, you see him like taking some big breaths, like as if trying to focus on something. Um, it starts speaking in a strange tongue. You then don't understand it. It's like, uh, and you understand that shak la shak. It's been a long while, hundreds of years, hundreds, hungry, famish. I, uh, uh, I, I hit you, hit you with an elbow. This is no time to freeze. Stay on guard. Um, it yells then, Huruz, which you know means strength, and then slaughter, which means to slaughter and butcher. Uh, as you you call that out to to Shak, he closes his eyes and. Uh, Again, continues his freeze for a second and then opens them again, looking at you with the most savage look ever. Sure. And he jumps and bites at you. Uh, roll, roll me initiative. At point, everybody is rolling me initiative. Uh, oh. uh, it's a zero for initiative. It's a zero for initiative. So, Grigori, it's a zero. I have a 13. Uh, I have an 18, and you have a 13. Uh, give me a perception. Who? Everyone. I have a 17 for that. It's a 5. Um, Shock, you see, passing by, just passing by and like, glancing at you, uh, head turned, the storyteller. Passing. You see it for a second, it goes in the forest, you can't see it. But at this, this moment, um, we're gonna go into battle, guys, as uh, Shaka is attacking, and the first one 
uh, one second because I had the battle music. Um, um, Shaq goes first. Okay. So Shaq will uh, will go and savagely like let's move towards Gregory. Will savagely try to bite out of him and then make an offhand attack with his axe. It's a natural twenty for my first roll. Okay, what happens? Um, it's a d6 plus, okay. I mean 2d6 plus my strength modifier, nothing special. Ah, 1-1. One, one. <laughs> so, uh, you take 7 points of piercing damage, and then with my offhand axe, it's a 24 to hit. And you take another 2 points of damage, <clears throat> slashing. And as that happens... Um, this is all your fault! You had to show off power and strength! I am made to do this. Um, the second one is Jormungandr, the great serpent. And it starts uh, slithering and coiling around you and it starts yelling, Hurruz! Hurruz! Gregory, it's your turn. Uh, Gregory is stunned and. Um, uh, as he's uh, uh, standing uh, in guard, looks at Shaq. He's not even minding the the creature, the large creature engulfing us anymore. Snap out of it, Shaq. You always have a choice. Otherwise, you're just as blind as Hebdom and as Lucius. And um, I try to knock you out uh, unconscious, so uh, I'll... Uh... Do you roll with disadvantage? Oh, yeah. Well, for unconsciousness? No, you don't. For no, it's, a... it's a non little damage. Yeah, non little. Ah, okay. You don't, so it's, you don't, not... it's a normal okay. roll. Normal never, damage. Never mind. No uh, but you have to mention it. Okay, yeah. it's fine. Um, we'll do it like this. It's, it's not really you have to mention it, but it's better this way. Okay. You have to say non little at the end, yeah. so that... Um, so it's a 24 to hit. That hits. Hits. Okay. So, um, uh, let's see. Gregory uh, runs towards you and tries to sort of protect you and hit it, hit you with the hilt of his great hammer. And hits you very strongly, exuding the same perfume of wormwood and honey. And does Watch. damage for? Um, 10. 10 uh, bludgeoning damage. You take one blow to the head. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I do that, I sort of get on one knee and try to um, get my shield from beneath you to push you away from me five feet. Uh, so give me a strength savings check, please. It's not athletics, it's just strength pure? Yeah, for shove. Okay, it's, it's something else. Yeah. But for the... It's a, the telekinetic shove. Ah, okay. Uh, just strength saving throw, so that's 16. Okay, it uh, passes, so nothing happens. So you try to move it with your shield. Uh, Shaq is, uh, has its feet deep in the ground and it's, it's holding its, its ground. Okay, and um, uh, that is my uh, top. Uh, top of the round, Shaq. Okay. Ah, there is nothing to snap out of. I don't have a choice. And uh, using uh, two of my uh, essence, I will um, I will cast taste for power. I have to make a melee spell attack mm -hmm. against uh, Gregory. And describe me how do you do it? Hmm? You go the next, and uh, you see Shark that uh, he's leaning back and then uh, opens his mouth like way larger than usual, and you see these two fangs that are uh, two fangs per jaw that are opening up, and he lunges to to bite at you, and then. He draws like, like if he hits, he draws upon like uh, your blood and essence, and uh, does an 18 hit. Just hits. Okay. So you uh, clasp at uh, uh, at his shoulder. Um, and try to get through his armor with with my fangs. And you find like a, a sort of a weak spot, and you hit hit it with your fang, and they pierce your skin. No. So you take first of all. You take uh, 15 points of piercing damage. And uh, as Shark lets go, you see him growing more savage and, and uh, agitated. And uh, 
From now on, your attacks will do 1d4 less damage. Okay. Mine will get that added to them. Ah, and a constitution saving throw for having cast a spell. Okay. It's a natural 20. Okay. As as Shark does this, he man- tries to maintain some control over, over his abilities and you see like blood coming out of his nose and eyes. Like it's clearly it's hurting him to, to continue this. Ukara! Uh, your Ungander starts uh, chanting, Ukara! Um, it turns its great massive uh, body that would obviously continue, but I don't have a mini. So this would have to do uh, and encircle you guys and body still um, left to um, pierce through the, the cave. Gregory. Uh, um, Gregory uh, is hit pretty badly, but uh, he gets a second win to himself. Um, so let's see, that's... Uh, 12 added and um, that's quite neat and uh, then I'll uh, just uh, attack you uh, try to I'll try to smash one of your knee calves uh, um, 17 to hit as you do so, you see like you, you get this pain in your hammer when you're hitting something really solid. You realize that Shrak Lashrak's skin and, and the body is really, really hard. Like, no, not very hard and rubber that barely misses. Okay. Barely does not hit. Um, and uh, I try to use the swing of the hammer to get it one more time to hit with an action, sh- action surge. And that's a 24 to hit. Uh, so that's an um, eight slashing damage. Minus two, so that's six. No, that's already. Ah, oh, you have the. No, okay, I was gonna take care of it, but okay. So that's eight. Uh, with, so ten minus two, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, that's my... So um, first attack misses, but the second one just uh, pierces and, and and hits you a little bit. You sort of recuperate some of that energy and momentum, Shaq. Um, actually, I would like to tell you more about this. Talk a little bit later when I took combat. Shaq, is this your choice? Is this the choice you want to live with? Is it worth more than your life? More than your connection to the world, to animals, to friends? That's what. Okay. Who's turn is it? Yours. Okay. Friends. I never had any friends. I had a family. And they ended out just like you will. And uh, I'll try to bite him. Uh, 17, does that hit? No. Okay. And then with my offhand attack, it's a miss as well. So Shark tries to um, um, get. get b- b- Hit at Gregory with his bite, with his claw. Uh, Gregory moves uh, as he's keeping uh, the speech. He inspires so much bravery, even in this moment, and trying to like turn you on the other side and exude the same enchanting perfume. You can't stand it. It's fucking menacing. Um, Shark has an expression of both rage and sadness at the same time. Uh, Jormungandr starts. Uh, saying something uh, sort of translates into what is taking you so long uh, Gregory again um, as I do the same uh, hit and shove with the shield I ask you what are you gaining through this what is so enticing that you'd be willing to throw away a different life as I hit you for an e- uh, 18 to hit. That's my armor class. Okay. And the damage is um, 6 slashing. Uh, so I'm uh, doing the 
uh, before again. Hurt. And do a strength saving check, please, for DC 13. 4 plus 5 plus 7, 11. Uh, I failed. Okay, uh, and I managed to push you. Um, I tried to push you 5 feet into. Yeah. Does he take damage from uh, into your Mungander? You smash a little bit, you take 1d4 damage, 1d4 yeah, for colliding into your Mungander. So way. I take 1d4 damage? 1d4, yeah, you roll it. Roll your own damage! 2. 2. <laughs> you, um, your back sort of cracks a little bit against this uh, gargantuan creature. Um, Shack. And, and um, I move right next to him, so he's. Uh, cornered. Yeah. Okay. Shack will lunge to try to fight at you again. And it's a 19 to hit. Yeah. Uh, you will take uh, seven points of piercing damage, and I'll use one usage of voracious regeneration to heal up three times my proficiency modifier. So that's six. Okay. And that's my bonus action. You said seven. Uh, uh, for me. For for you, yeah. uh, six the healing. So um, Shaq bites and into your skin and then an offhand attack. Mm -hmm. uh, and he gets also rejuvenated. That's, hmm? that's uh, yeah. That's not a ah, but uh, that doesn't hit. But my initial hit does do an extra one d four damage. So another three damage. Okay. Not okay. Uh, how are you looking, Gregory? Um, and I, I want to reply to him. I'm past bloodied. Past bloodied. Uh, Gregory is barely standing. I want he, to say something to him as a reply to what he said. I'm winning my life back. I got this spot. He went from when I was nothing and I will not quit it. Not for you, not for anyone. Um, your Mungander coils again once more. Uh, he encircles you now in a tight, tight circle. Um, <clears throat> Gregory. How bad is Shaq looking? How bad is Shaq? I'm bloodied. Okay. He's also bleeding, both of you are bleeding. Iron is in the air, for you it's much more than this. You're feeling the stakes of this act of yours. The heavy choice that you must make. Do you listen to your hunger? Do you listen to your calling? Do you listen to what was given to you? Or do you obey this new thing, this friendship, loyalty, what Gregory stands for and what this delightful perfume comes for and from... Gregory, what do you do? It's your turn, right? I see, so you do this for yourself. There is no other choice. And Chuck, is... Chuck spits this large amount of blood, like being really hurt. There is always a choice. I choose to not hold this against you. I choose to ask you, my murderer. Tell our friends what happened. They should know. As I try to still uh, fight for my life uh, uh, with an attack and a shot. Uh, so that's uh, 18 to hit. It's um, so that's uh, 10 slashing and bludgeoning, right? Um, bludgeoning, sorry, and um, uh, strength save from you, please. Same, uh, this, uh, this I save it's 25. Okay, yeah, um, that is a miter. Okay. Um, Your Mungandar yells again, Huruz! Uh, as a free action. Uh, Shaq. Okay. I will try to hit with a bite attack again. Why should they know anything of this? You will be reduced to ashes. Nothing will go past. Not your ideals. Why have you let yourself be betrayed? This is all your fault. Not mine, yours. 18 plus a lot that hits. So, you will take 3 plus 5, 8 points of piercing damage. And uh, I will also get healed by 6 again. 
This is my last uh, usage of Voracious Region Elevation and then my offhand attack. 19 plus. Take another 4 points of slashing. How are you looking, Gregory? 1 HP left. Gregory is barely standing. He's bleeding. He's bleeding. He's exuding now that his uh, wounds are exposed. His blood is all over. You feel the same smell, but you're looking into this man's uh, posture, his his eyes, he's like... Sort of... It's a sort of a mixture between what he's trying to convey, even in this last moment of his, and the power he exudes, and the, the justice he, he wants to proclaim. Actually, I'm not looking. Shaki is not looking into his eyes. As he's looking at him, he avoids his gaze, just looking enough to hit and then has this this trouble actually looking at Gregory. Okay. Um, Gregory, this is your turn. Yeah. My murderer. Thank you for saving Yarek. Although that was not your first thought to mind. Thank you for showing us that beast folk are not mindless, that they can be more. Thank you for showing us their potential. Thank you for being a friend for this short amount of time. You see like shocked even though bloody and, and enraged he's getting a bit smaller and that's again he averts his gaze. I ask you one more thing, take your life back, take back control over it, do what you think is best, as I again try to attack it, it's a natural one. <laughs> like he can barely uh, throw this hammer, he misses and this like, um, almost lifeless way of throwing it. Um, do you do something else? Uh, I was hoping for a crushing attack. Alas, this was the best I could do. Um, shock is your turn. Gregory is barely standing. Did you want to do something else? A bonus? Um... I can try, but uh, I can try to have you one more time i'll try to put my my uh, shield on your uh, foot so that it hurts and you maybe jump back into the creature um, i did actually do manage to push me i failed my okay one before damage you smash against uh, your, your grandmother this uh, um, enormous gargantuan serpent your back hurts yeah as shock is going back he takes another big breath and uh, tries to lunge at you, biting out of you. It's a natural twin. Um, so as as he lunges towards you, like you see his fangs stopping in your armor and then trying to grab at you and fight you for your weapon and then turning towards the snake. I have proved you strength. This is strength. I've won this combat. This one does not actually convey strength. Was this the only prey you could find? Pathetic. He could be more useful as an ally. He knows the ins and outs of Green Spring. We could get so much more out of him. Um, he coils around and around and he says, Jacques Lanchac. Did you think devourers had a choice? I see you do not have the heart for it. I finish it for you. You're weak. He turns. Uh, the serpent abruptly crushes his head into yours, plummeting in the ground, moving a little bit, shock out of the way. And he topples upon you, Gregory. And the last thing you see are intense orange-yellow eyes as you see this huge mouth 
with two fangs gaping at you and a slithering tongue coming towards you. Darkness. And we're gonna end the session here. Thank you guys for uh, watching this intense session. Um, and if you manage it to, to reach the end, you are a very special person. Um, very, very special person. We have been what? through a lot of <laughs> roller coasters today. Congratulations, yay. Thank you very much for sticking Thank with you. us and any support. Subscribe, like, comment really helps us make more content and uh, you know, make uh, make the magic go and uh, keep sustaining it and as always you can always share your questions or thoughts on our discord channel uh, that we can debate on the after dice uh, segment it's, it's a show that we debate questions on we'll have a lot to debate we'll have here. a lot to debate right here uh, send them uh, in the discord there's a, there's a sheet there to, to complete thank you again rolling hills craft uh, for the miniatures uh, very beautiful uh, thank you the thank you alexander thank you diana thank you inside miniatures for the sculpting and the painting you can always use the promo code that you will find in the description thank you sirinsky for music and ambience more questions to be answered next time what happens to gregory what happens to gregory tell me, <laughs> tell, tell me. we want to know i'm not i do not know we're gonna find out next time um is immortality achievable what's the price uh tune in sundays for vim premieres every uh, uh sunday uh at 5 p.m utc on youtube dysylvania good day good night and don't oh, let the bell pepper your <laughs> 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 lots of love and kisses